Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from LA. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning. What's happening? Uh, The NBA has a new face. Move over, LeBron, your history. Don't do that. I thought Kawhi was the face. Zion just yeah. took the whole league so, over last night. I'm sorry it's over, LeBron. Hold on. We, do we, we shout and get mm. pom-poms out and mm. get popcorn for ales? Mm. I don't serve popcorn <laughs> at my uh, restaurant. I don't true. serve. When you come uh, get the ales, you don't get no popcorn. If that man could have finished that game, the L would have been no, on my spurs. No, 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 I'm no, no, sorry. No, no, no. I don't, I don't you know, know it and I know I don't know what he could have done or should have done. I'm just telling you what <laughs> yeah, happened. Okay. We're going to get there. We have a huge show today. Should the 49ers thank Bill Belichick for their trip? to the Super Bowl, yep. and will Eli Manning end up in the Hall of Fame when it's all said and done? But first, we do have to start with the guy that we all watched last night, Zion Williamson's debut. The number one overall pick did not disappoint in his first game with the Pelicans, dropping 22 <laughs> points in only 18 minutes, including a wild stretch of 17 straight points in the fourth quarter that included Four threes and some impressive post moves. Zion would then be pulled for the final stretch because of a minutes restriction, and the Spurs would go on to win 121 to 117. The New Orleans fans were left chanting, We want Zion, a plea that head coach Alvin Gentry definitely heard. Take a listen. And no, he couldn't go back in the game. Okay, so that don't don't go there. All right. Just because the medical people said that was it. Uh, it's very hard. Uh, you know, I'm 19, honestly. In that moment, I'm not thinking about longevity. I'm thinking about winning that game. So it's very, it was very tough. Just the energy the crowd brought, um, the energy the city brought. Um, it was electric, and you know, I'm just grateful that they did that. So it was a dream come true to finally get out there, but at the end of the day, I didn't want to win. So I just got to look the next game. Mm. Wants to win as well, mm. Shannon. Mm. How impressed were you by his debut? I was shocked by it, Skip, given that the that he was only going to play probably about 20 minutes. And you know you get 20 minutes in four quarters, Skip. It's hard to catch a, a rhythm. Mm-hmm. You play three minutes here, you play four minutes there, you play five minutes, you play another three. And so it was hard for him to get a rhythm. If you think about it, Skip, he only took three shots in the first three quarters. Mm-hmm. He's a, he, sports are about rhythm. And you hear guys talk about it all the time. I got a rhythm early. I got going early, and, and everything flowed after that. And so he wasn't in a rhythm. And then the start of the fourth, all of a sudden, he found that rhythm. And so I was shocked. Skip, I, I think my stat line was like 10. I thought he had 10 points, six rebounds, two dunks, two blocks. Um, so I was shocked with how well he played and the amount of time that he played. But I think the most shocking things were the threes. Skip, we never saw this at Duke. Now, Moving forward, I'm not so sure they're going to let him have shoot-around open threes. Hmm. I think the guys will probably – I'm not saying that you got to guard him like Steph Curry and, and Kevin Durant or Clay Thompson, but it's hard for me to imagine that guys are going to leave him seven, eight, nine, ten feet open to shoot a three like he's shooting in shoot-around. So that – but I was surprised. Um, what I wasn't surprised to see, Skip, is that he's going to get those effort plays. A loose ball around the basket, oh, he's going to grab that and go back up so quick. He missed one. I mean, he can bounce. He can leave the floor, miss a shot, come down, back up again as qu- as good as anybody, as quick as anybody that I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't surprised. They threw him a lob skip. He's over the top of everybody. That didn't surprise me. Him getting a ball in a, in a, in a, in a close restricted area, quick move to the basket, that didn't surprise me. The three surprised me in how they came considering that he was not in a rhythm early. So I'm not going to overreact. Now, this is not Steph Curry or Kevin Durant or Klay Thompson shooting threes. Let's not overreact. This is not going to be a big part of his ball game. But what he did show, if you leave me open by five, six, eight feet, I'm going to shoot this shot. They're gonna, it's going to kind of be like LeBron's skill. What, what, what did he do? Play off him until he can consistently make it. Well, that's what they're going to do with, uh, uh, with uh, this kid here, Zion. But uh, I was impressed. You have to, it's hard not to be impressed. To get 17 points, straight points. And that little bit of time when you don't have a rhythm just goes to show you once he gets his legs more up under him, he gets his win more up under him, and he gets to playing in, in that type of a, a, a setting. Yeah, he, he can be, uh, Skip, I never questioned the guy's ability. You know what I questioned. 
And last night was probably a sample, a very small sample of what this young man is capable of. Hmm. Hmm. My turn. Yes. I wasn't just surprised by what happened in the fourth quarter. I was all time shocked. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I've ever seen anything quite like mm -hmm. what I witnessed in a three minute span of the fourth quarter of that game last night. Because through three quarters, to your point, Zion Williamson had been a literally huge disappointment. He was. Yeah. He had been 285 pounds, and I'm probably being generous there <laughs> in, on the low end. He had been 285 pounds of letdown. I, I, I was so disappointed that I, I wanted to turn it off, but I knew I had to hang in because I thought maybe Alvin and the medical people would give him one last little run in the fourth yeah. quarter right. of a game that was completely out of hand at that point thanks mostly to the Pelicans who weren't quite ready for that primetime game because the game for the rest of the Pelicans felt to them like it was a playoff game because the whole NBA world had tuned in to watch them. Correct. And they weren't quite yet up to that task because they've been on a little bit of a roll here yeah. lately and my Spurs were rolling over them. So what had I seen through three quarters? I saw Not Zion. Much. I, I saw him be out of sync, maybe a little bit out of shape. A little I, lost. I saw a tentative. I mm -hmm. saw a little confidence. I saw joy less mm -hmm. from a kid who's always so joyful when he plays. Correct. And Alvin said in his interview in game, God, he's just playing so conservatively. I'm trying to get him out of that. Right. And I'm thinking five points with four ugly turnovers through three quarters, <laughs> not much of a start. And so I had already tweeted, we're just going to have to be patient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nope, no. Nope. <laughs> then that happened. I haven't seen an explosion like that, and you'll say I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. This is from my heart. I haven't seen an explosion like that in three minutes since MJ and Kobe were in their primes, and I'll tell you why. This is a three-minute domination that features inside as well as outside. Remember, Klay Thompson holds the all-time one-quarter NBA record. He, he scored 30. somehow 37 points in a quarter uh -huh. back in 2015 against Sacramento at Golden State. Mm -hmm. Yet, what was that? It was all catch-and-shoot, heat-check three-point shots that are extraordinary. Where you just say, that's impossible. Right. But it's just... Pew, 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 yep. Right? Yep. This was both ways, right. inside and outside. Mm -hmm. And it was only three minutes, and it was only 17. Wait, he scored 17 in three minutes? Well, do the math. That's only one-fourth of the quarter. Right. Well, if you do four times 17, <laughs> that's, that's 68 points in the quarter. 68 points in a quarter. Again, we're, I'm, I'm extrapolating right, out right. into to madness. Right. But, mm -hmm. but that's what he accomplished, and it felt like, a one-man Mardi Gras to me, where he just took over the whole game yeah. physically, mentally, emotionally, inside, outside. Yeah. And it felt like he took the rookie of the year lead in three minutes. That's what, and I know, Jaw has been extraordinary. Right. I love Jaw. You love Jaw. But this was a whole nother level from Ja Morant. This was, wait a second, this is a display, as you know, of power and finesse. Mm -hmm. Of, of just e extreme explosion and, and athleticism and touch right. and veteran vision, because he's got veteran. He's got, remember, he played point guard in high school. Correct. So he's got veteran vision, and he's still got, once he got into the rhythm and the flow, he, he's got this childlike energy and joy and desire to mm -hmm. play where, where it's just explosive desire like a little kid with a new toy. Mm -hmm. Well, last night was a kid with a new toy because, uh, uh, remember, the, the, the whole world was watching him. And what I loved about him at Duke and I loved about him last night, did he shrink in the moment? Well, I thought for three quarters maybe he was shrinking. Yeah. Uh, guess what? <laughs> he is at his greatest when the lights get brightest. And all of a sudden, we looked up, and the Spurs had gone from 15 up to one down. Mm -hmm. When he left the game, they're, they're up a point. Up a point. How did you do that? The Spurs aren't great this year. Obviously, they're just sort of fighting for the eighth spot like the Pelicans are about to fight for the eighth spot. I think the Pelicans will wind up in the eighth spot. But the point was that the Spurs are pretty good, and he, he rendered them 
a bunch of little kids. That's what they look like, just ragdolled all over the place. And if we could go to the play that first caught my eye, this started the explosion. What did I tell you yesterday? I predicted that Zion would, would dunk. He would posterize my buddy, my buddy, Jakob Pertl. Jakob. Yeah. Jacob. Oh, Jakob. <laughs> and so watch what Zion does to Jakob to start this run. Watch, watch what happens here. Okay, this is, oh, that's the block. Okay, so this is, okay, Jakob blocked his shot. There's, there's a play before this, right. actually. But, but, okay, Jakob blocks his shot, and to your point, he just goes whoosh. And here's the other play where th this started the run. This is with nine minutes left. Patty misses, and Jakob's got the rebound. He's got position inside. He's seven feet, one inches tall, and Zion goes and snatches it over his head, then dribbles the ball up the floor, and with a two-hand chest pass, feeds each one more for the easy deuce. Look at this. Look, look you, you want to talk about explosion? <laughs> he went oh. up over a seven foot one guy without fouling him. Yeah. I didn't think it was a foul. He just no. went up and snatched yeah. it yeah, over it his head. And I'm saying, what? Jakob, that's your ball. That's your put back. And then he goes the other way and leads the break like a point guard. Look at that pass. Was that not on? That That's dropping can, a dime. He can pass for a big man. Like you said, he played point guard the better he did. in high school. He did. So he has the kind of handling ability skills. Wow. And so now we're back to your point about can he shoot or could he not? I thought he was a really good shooter in college. He just didn't try very many. But even in the playoffs in the NCAAs, right. he made some threes where he said, wow, that's pretty good. Because, and Skip, right now is that you have to back because you understand that he's so explosive and he can get by you. He gets by you, he's flushing it. So you say, you know what, we'll concede that. We're going to see, can you make that shot? Now, I don't know if you want to leave him 8 to 10 feet, Skip, because he's like he's shooting free throws, like his shoot around. Because if you see, like, he thought about it, like, okay, you really not going to come out here? Yeah, okay. he, gets, he gets it and he just, he swishes it. Okay. Do you not like that stroke? That's a sweet stroke. Yes. yes. It's pure to it, me. It is, a, it is a great stroke, and I think he should be a great free throw shooter with that stroke. I agree. But, Skip, three points, somebody's hugging up on him, you're not going to get that off. You're not going to get a set shot off. Okay. I, I got it. But... Now, if you, you establish, I can make this, mm -hmm. he can blow by people, right. too. Well, I'm gonna have, you have to do it a couple of games. You have to do it like 10, 20 games, 15, 20 games. Mm. I'm not going to overreact after one game. Skipper, you mentioned about Ja, ja Morant, who I believe is, the, rookie, is the, uh, the NBA Rookie of the Year right now. But this is a situation like, you know, with Chappelle, had his Netflix. Everybody was anticipating Chappelle's Netflix. Mm -hmm. But Eddie Murphy Netflix, that's what they're really anticipating. They were anticipating seeing Ja. But when this kid and the ESPN moved that game that he, against uh, uh, San Antonio to Wednesday prime time, mm -hmm. everybody, this is what everybody was talking about. Okay, did he not live up? He it, lived, it, he, took, it took a while. It took a while. It yep. took a while. And like I said, Skip, I was shocked considering, like, okay, I didn't see the threes. I know, I know what he can do athleticism. I know he's going to go up, because I know the play you're talking about. They threw him a lob, and he caught it over Pearl. Pertle, Jakob Pertle's back and put it in the, and he almost dunked it but he lost control of it he did. and he ended up laying it up, uh, off the glass so yes I know he can make those kind of plays I know he can get the ball in a, in a, small, in a, a close area confined area and get to the rim against anybody I know that but when he started hitting threes and it seemed like the, the more he the first one like oh okay then the second one it seemed like the basket got bigger for him but I, I love what Gentry did he didn't succumb to the pressure of being down 15 to up one and leave him in. The medical staffs probably well, said... remember, he kept trying to take him out. He kept sending subs to the scorer's table. Right. And then Zion hit another on. three and he'd say, Come back. Hey, get back here. <laughs> well, well, how can you not? I mean, you, you can't interrupt that. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And finally, when it calmed down just a little bit, he said, OK, that's enough. Because no. he was under strict orders from David Griffin, his GM, and yeah. from the medical staff. Right. Just three or four minute bursts, right? Because he's coming off knee surgery and he's a huge man. It, it, right? It, you heard Zion. Zion says, "I'm not worried about longevity. I was worried about trying to win this game tonight." Well, Alvin Gentry says, "I'm not worried about one game tonight. Right. I'm worried about <laughs> the next five, ten years of your career." So we're gonna err on. They're gonna err on the side of caution, Skip. He's probably gonna be on a minute's restriction at least for the next month, month and a half. He might not ever get to 40 minutes in a game this season, and that's perfectly fine. I don't know if he'll get to over 30 minutes in a game this season. Okay, but on his weight last night, he's obviously a big kid. Yes. It didn't look like he was any heavier last night than he played at Duke. That's just to my eye. Right. 
Because he's just big. Yeah, he's and, big. And is he a little, does he carry a little extra tonnage? Yes, he yes, does. Yes. But that's just who he, he's right. always done that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so did he look winded in the three-minute stretch? Not to no. me. Right. Did he look completely gassed when he did get taken out of the game in the right. late in the fourth quarter, or mid-fourth mid, mid fourth quarter, actually? No, he did not look gassed. So it felt to me, and I, I've known Alvin for a long time, it felt to me like if it had been strictly Alvin's call, he might have let him try to go a little right. bit farther just because his old school instincts right. would be saying, he he looks like he's handling this okay. And old school old school players and coaches, Skip, they under the, look, that's what you do, you play. Because the year that Will went 15-25, he averaged 48 and a half minutes per game. And it's like, well, ooh, 48 and a half in every game. And then what did he do follow up? He followed it up with 44 and 20 to the next season. Mm. But that's not the way – this new way of thinking, Skip, analytics says, guys, you know, play this many minutes, and if you can give them, you know, catch them, give them a break here or there, try to steal some minutes, that's what you do. But this kid is coming off a situation, Skip, where he had surgery, and it was supposed to be, what, four to six weeks, six to eight weeks, and it was ended up 13 weeks. It, it's not major now. It's no. just that meniscus. Right. It's cartilage surgery. It wasn't a big knee reconstruction right. and of a ligament. And they tried to do a lot of different things – how to land, how to yep. take off, and all okay. those things. But at the end of the day, Skip, look, I get it. You say you don't want the guy to land straight-legged, and you want to try to have him mm -hmm. take off on two legs and land on two legs. But at the end of the day, Skip, you start playing. You start playing. What you do? You go up, you come down. Yeah. You're not thinking, but you know what? They told me I need to center myself and make sure my butt and my quads and my ham, you know, yeah. absorb that shot. That ain't, you ain't thinking about that. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> not not the way he plays. No, it's no, happening no, so fast. Right. You don't have time yeah, to You think can do about that it. when they said, okay, you're out there with the, with the people around. Okay, Zion, here we go. Shoot the shot. Remember, land square. And that takes time to Man. change. Zion so, said, I'm going up. I'm dunking on somebody. So the crowd went from sitting on its hands. <laughs> and I'm sure some people probably went home. They left. Probably, oh, yeah. You could oh, tell right. people had left. Yep. I'll bet a whole lot seats. of people turned their televisions off and went to bed. Yeah. But given all that, the the impact was so great over that three minute stretch. They started chanting MVP, MVP. <laughs> well, so we went from, oh, what a terrible dis all time right. disappointment to MVP. So it raises the issue: Did he set his bar too high? Because we've seen Cam Newton, game number one. Yeah. Remember what happened? Oh. Four twenty two. Four, then four okay. twenty three the next week. Next week, <laughs> and then after that, never again. Okay. So did he just go Cam Newton? I just don't think so. No. I, I just think he can live up to this. I don't think it bothers him a bit. He was the spotlight player all through last basketball, mm -hmm. through college basketball, right? Right. It's all anybody wanted to watch was Zion. Right. And it doesn't seem to phase him right. at all. Yeah. Skip, look, he's the number one overall draft pick. He's come in with the, uh, as much fanfare as LeBron James. Because we haven't seen anything to come in like this mm -mm. since LeBron. And like you said, what the first three quarters, I was like, oh, well. Five points. I give you. I mean, you gotta understand. I mean, dude's only playing three, four minute increments. What the hell they thought he was gonna do? Yeah. Drop twenty. But then all of a sudden, something happened. Something happened, Skip. Maybe, maybe I was like, bro, you been, you been maybe. too conservative. Maybe. Just go yep. get to the basket. Yep. He messed around and got that loose ball, and like a light went off. He yeah, saw one it. three go in. He's like, y'all been, y'all just being disrespectful to me. Remember what Ja told uh, 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 James Harden when he hit that three in his face. Y'all tell me who I am. Tell this <laughs> so-and-so who I am. So that, right? was, yeah. that was Zion saying, hey, LaMarcus, for real? Mm -hmm. You got that little, little respect from me. Okay. First it was Jakob having little You know Jakob. <laughs> Yo, Jakob. Oh, my, my guy Jakob. He's a good guy. <laughs> but, guy. But he had a tough night there in the fourth quarter. So I even love this kid's name. I was thinking about it last night because it's biblical, Zion, Zion. right? Yeah. And, and that felt like that was biblical proportions last night, what, what he did in that, that stretch. Didn't uh, uh, Bob Marley have a song talking about marching up to Zion? Yeah. Oh, I think so. <laughs> yeah, he, it he, sounds familiar. It, it can refer to Jerusalem or Israel yeah. or yeah. Zion. And if right. you skip, look, this is when you know you, you've arrived. Mm -hmm. You go by one name. Mike. Mm. Yeah, I know. He's got LeBron. That. He's got it. Kobe. That's yep. so true. Shaq. Yep. Zion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the way he signs. That's the way he's, he's not going to sign Zion Williamson. He's going to sign Zion. Zion. Even when I read it, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I don't even need to say his last name. Yeah, nope. I've already you know thought that. He got one of them unique names. Mm. I know another guy got a new unique name that came in as a number one overall pick. You know it. I don't know. You know it. Who, Dak? He go by GOAT. 
Oh, Goat. I thought you meant Dak Prescott. You know what? Dak, you Dak, Dak everybody knows you Dak is stop. Dak. You know, you, they go. <laughs> Dak is a unique name. <laughs> I got you on that both. one, didn't I? Okay, no. Yeah. Still, oh, look. Isn't that, that Dakota Johnson? Rain Dakota. Isn't that Dakota Johnson? Isn't that Dakota Johnson? Yes. Yeah. So? Okay, then. So we know a lot of Dakotas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we got a lot of Dakotas. You got North and South Dakota. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Zion, let the man have his name. That's I'm fine. I'm trying to give you something. See, I no, got to call you a phone. Listen, I give you. <laughs> LeBron is a great name. I love that name. Yeah. It's just, it's unusual and it's catching. It's just LeBron. Yeah. Okay? But all of a sudden, there's Zion. And you, you got to be something. You got to catch a name. You got to be something. They can't give you one of these names that's very unique. I know. And you, uh... I always think about that when parents go bold with the name selection. Yeah, he better be. He, mm. That's he, a lot he of better pressure. Be he, is, he better be something. <laughs> mm. Mm. I can get to squeeze by with Jenny. <laughs> Skip, uh, that's uh, unique. Skip is unique. You know what? That ain't unique. I, I know a lot is. of guys. I used skip. to not like it, but now I, I'm good with it. I don't know any mm. other skips. So. Yeah, I do. I went to school with one. You uh, did? I went to school with like? a skip, but he wasn't very good. <laughs> really? No, he wasn't very good. Mm, he, was okay. about, he was about back up. Uh. <laughs> Only one skip you have to worry yeah, but about what's, nowadays. <laughs> what's bizarre is that my father, when he was dating my mother, called my mother skipper, as in, really? like, you're the skipper of the ship. Right. You make the choices. Right. Oh. And, and then I'm the firstborn, and they're going to name me after my father, John, which they did. But then they just started calling me Skip from the first day. Huh. And, and no one ever called me John the rest of my life. So I got my name changed. So that was always so day like, one. You were so Skip. So I'm Skip nickname. from the start. Oh, no one ever, my, my parents never called me John one second, mm. one time. So I'm Skip, and you're going to have to deal with it. No. The one <laughs> Skip you got to think about. Did you have a nickname? Uh, I don't have don't a middle know. name, so they just, you know, no, they just go. Big, big play Shaq. They just call me, I mean, they call me Chateau. Because oh, I always, Chateau. yeah, I like the finer things in life. Oh. Yeah, you would grow it, yeah, they call me Chateau Brion. Did they really? That's what they call me. I'm so I did glad not I know, know that yeah. now. Oh, wow. It all makes sense. That's what my sister and my brother call me. I just judge for me. No mercy. All right, guys, just a couple days. We are headed to Miami starting Monday. Undisputed and all of our FS1 shows will be live at Loomis Park on South Beach as we get ready for Super Bowl 54. If you are in the area, please do come by and watch us live and in person. We have an audience, so check-in starts at 8.30 a.m. And here's the thing. You do not want to miss out because we have so many good guests. Lil Wayne, Offset, Christian McCaffrey, Michael Mm. Irvin, Deion Sanders, the list goes on. I'm just getting started there. I am excited. Oh, we My bag is packed. Shannon Sharp. Yeah. Yeah. We need to get J-Lo to come on one morning. Uh, I'm up for that. Really? Does yeah, it, we need to get we, J-Lo. Can you, you set got, that up? You got connection? I ain't got no connection. Yeah, nor do I, but I'm in. <laughs> I love J-Lo. Uh, I'm going to talk to the bosses about she, that. She may ask to come on. Yeah, that'd be real nice. I know she knows something about little... Okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. See what I can do. Guys, we do have to talk here about Eli Manning because reports have come out that Eli Manning is set to retire from football this Friday. After spending most of this season on the bench behind Daniel Jones, Eli had already said that he didn't want to want a backup role next year. Eli led the Giants to two Super Bowl wins, including an incredible underdog victory over the 18-0 Patriots. And Eli will also finish his career in the top 10 for both passing yards and touchdowns and will walk away with a 500 record of 117 and 117. So, Shannon, it is the Mm million-dollar question. Is Eli a Hall of Famer? Skip, this is really tough on me because when I – comment about a player should or shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. It's not Shannon Sharp said a player should or shouldn't be. It's Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp said. And it's almost like I'm saying he doesn't deserve to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But when you look at it, Skip, he's going to get in. He is. He's one of five quarterbacks that's won multiple Super Bowls and a two-time MVP. Brady, Montana, Bart Starr, Terry Bradshaw. Hmm. He's one of five. That's it. And it's not, Skip, if he beats anybody else, who did he beat? Yep. He took down Goliath twice. Even if you say the first time the helmet catch was the luckiest. That throw to Mario Manningham might have been the greatest throw in Super Bowl history. Cover five, to drop that ball in like he dropped it in, Skip. That was a great throw. See, I think the thing is we get so caught up. He ain't Peyton. He's not Brady. He's not Breeze. You talk, look. There are 323, 25 in the Hall of Fame. Skip that. Look, guys get in the Hall of Fame. But everybody ain't Jim Brown. Everybody's not going to be Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. So 
when you look at his career, yes, 117 and 117, that's not good. Led the league in interception three times. But, um, and the way it's going now, he getting in, Skip. And would I be surprised if it's on the first ballot? Absolutely not. Because they say this, the first ballot is for the best of the best. We're talking about you can't even tell the story of the NFL oh. without these guys. Would I be surprised if they put him on the first ballot? No, I would not. But wow. The mi- you wouldn't? I would, no, Skip. Think about Because oh. here's the thing. What should give people pause. It's not, well, Eli's retired. The first thing, what was the next thing out of the mind for Eli's retiring? Is he a Hall of Famer? We've never had to ask that question about any other quarterback in the history of the game, Skip. Hmm. Not one time. Interesting. Mm-hmm. But this is what the this and so this is how really on the fence a lot of people are. You look at him in his and, and so I, I believe it should be an error. In your era when you played, look at his peers. Where do you put him? You can't compare him to guys that played, you know, Elway in the 80s and 90s and these other guys. Look at when he played. He played against Brady, he played against Breeze, he played against, you know, Big Ben. There are a lot of guys, you know. Phillip Rivers think we'll have that same conversation minus the Super Bowl about Phillip Rivers. But, Skip, I wish there was another way I could, uh, could frame it. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame. He's going to have a gold jacket. Hmm. Will you feel good about that? <laughs> I don't feel it. I'll be honest, Skip. I don't feel any way. I don't feel any way. Because, you know, I, I'm sure there are people probably think I don't deserve to be in there, but I'm in there. So, Skip, look, it, it's hard. It, it really, Skip, it really is. People don't understand. It's kind of like... You know, you 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 know, you're in you do journalism. You win a Pulitzer Prize or you win the highest writing honor, and they said, Well, well you, what do you think about this, Skip? You think this guy should win the Pulitzer and Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Skip Baylor says no. Now he's like, Well, Skip Jeff, Skip J- Jealous, Skip's a hater. Mm-hmm. Sure. So you you can't win, but Skip, looking at the way it's trending and the guys that are getting in that we didn't think were gonna get in, Eli Manning's gonna be a Hall of Famer, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's on the first ballot. Mm. I do appreciate your position on this because it is a precarious position that you are in. And not that people need to be reminded, but you you did have to go through three ballots to get in. I did. So you know full well what it feels like not to get the call. Yes. It's hard on you. It is. After all you accomplished, you don't get a call and you don't get a call. Yeah. You got to wait a whole nother year. It's like, man. And it's torture, man. It's... I remember telling a couple of the guys that voted, I said, well, hell, if you didn't like three Super Bowls and 10,000 yards and 800 catches this year, you're not going to like it next year because guys are coming in with 1,000, with 1,200, with 1,300, and got 100 touchdown catches. So how do you like 62 this year, but you're going to like it more next year? Okay, I'm not in the Hall of Fame, and so I don't have to worry about (laughs) what you're worrying about right now. What have I told you from the start? My rule of thumb. You got to ask. If you have to ask, you're not in. Huh. If you have to second guess it for one second, is he a Hall of Famer? It's like Tom Brady. Is he a Hall of Famer? Yes, he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. He's the greatest quarterback who ever played. <laughs> Boom, he's in. Right. And I can do it with several other players. Breeze, okay. okay, it's just in. It, okay. let's, let's think of somebody else, you know, receivers, you know, great Julio Jones, Jones. You know, Julio like he, he's just transcendent. Right. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Correct. And, and there's no, well, I don't know, did he? Okay. Interesting. So back in my early days on ESPN, I sort of invented in my mind the Hall of Very Good. (laughs) And I will give you the Hall of Very Good for Eli Manning because he was very good. He just wasn't transcendent. He didn't sort of reinvent how the position was played. So for me, he's not in my vision of your Hall of Fame. And there are some guys who have gotten in that I wouldn't have put in the Hall of Fame. But I'm, I'm staunch about it because I want it to be the cream of the cream. You don't see general manager says, I need to find the next Eli Manning. No, no. <laughs> so to your point, huh. he finished 117 and 117 as a starter. Right. That's not great. Nope. He led the league in interceptions three times, as you point out. So he started 16 seasons for a cornerstone franchise up in New York, the New York football giants, and he made four Pro Bowls in 16 seasons. That's not transcendent, right? Right. And he did, to your point, he won two Super Bowl MVPs. But the truth was (laughs) that the Giants' defense, the defensive line, deserved to be the MVP of the first Eli Brady Super Bowl. And in the second one, just for the record, Brady's QBR in that game was 84 to Eli's 73. Mm -hmm. But Eli made one great throw 
And that, that might have been the, the throw of his career. Right. Oh, right yeah. down the chimney to Manning. Here. It's hard to find another throw skip in Super Bowl history that was better than that one. Yeah. Okay. But if Tom Brady doesn't barely miss another throw when they had the lead with four minutes left, if we could, there's this throw to Manningham. Mm -hmm. now, it, now if we could see, this is Brady's throw to Wes Welker. And it's not a terrible throw. Right. It's not like Dak overthrowing Tavon right. at Philadelphia where he missed him by 10 yards. But people that's watching this, Skip, don't understand. Do you see that safety driving? Yep. If he throws it inside. Inside, it's a problem. Oh. Okay. A I big problem it. for okay. that receiver. And, and I've said this many times. I believe Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp is going to catch that football. Yeah. Wes Welker's 5'9", 5'10", maybe. And he doesn't run many up-the-field right. routes. They're all underneath. And this was up the seam. And I don't think he's really used huh. to adjusting in the air for a throw that was a bit outside because it needed to be a bit outside. Looking at it, Skip, and I thought at the time, he got caught in between, do I turn and catch it like Correct. this? Correct. Or do I turn and just okay. catch it over my shoulder? Well, trust me on this. If you go back and check out the play-by-play -play of this game, if he catches that ball and it's a first down, I'm pretty it's sure the they're over. going to win the game. Yeah, the game's over. Okay, so then Eli doesn't have a second MVP and right. Super Bowl ring. So then I look at, at, at Eli's body of work, and, and it's just... If, if you look at he's eight and four in the playoffs, but that was with two Super Bowl runs. And, and if you look at the last eight seasons, he was the starter for the Giants. Yes. They made the playoffs one time in the last eight seasons. Mm -hmm. Think about that. One time in the last eight seasons. And you're saying he, he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Fame. What? Well, a, if I put Smith on the back of this <laughs> uniform, there is no way. But Skip, you know, Skip, you know how the, the voters, how they think. And a lot of, a lot of them think kind of like you think now. Most important position, most valuable position, and Super Bowls are everything to the quarterback. They're everything, and he got them. And who did he get them against? Skip, if he beats, yeah. I, I, I don't know, I don't. If some other, I don't know who the Patriots beat the year, uh, the year. But if he beats David Garrard in a Super Bowl, he beats a lesser tier guy. Yeah. And then you look at the run that he went on to get there. He beat Aaron Rodgers once on the road. He, he did, did do that. No, he did. So I'll uh, give and, you people, that. and people gonna look at like, okay. On his Super Bowl runs, who did he navigate through to mm -hmm. get there? So, and, and the way it's going now, like I said, it's just tough. It's just tough. Okay. Now, back to my all-time pet peeve play. And it was, I have <laughs> termed it the luckiest play in the history of the Super Bowl. And it just was. And Eli agreed with us in 2016 at the Super Bowl after yes. the season that it was lucky. So look at this. He escapes three times. Today's rules, he would have been ruled down. In the down. grasp. They like yep. say in, in the, the grasp. grasp. And then he just basically closes his eyes and throws it as far as he can up the middle of the field into trouble. And somehow David Tyree, who they said had terrible practices he that did. week, he, somehow he goes up and snatches it against his face mask in front of a really good safety named Rodney Harrison, who's now on NBC. But look at that. He escapes three potential sacks in the grasps. And somehow Tyree comes down with it. And remember, that's a third and five play mm -hmm. right. from the Giants' 45-yard line. If, if you miss that, we're getting toward game over, right? right? Okay, so th that did it. And then to Eli's credit, a few plays later, hit he play. did hit Plaxico. They and came on blitz. They came. They, they came, came on. on they came on a zero he, blitz. He he made a nice read, and he found him on the fade, and he just just threw it. It's beautiful. That's sweet. And I'm going to give you that because that's a game-winning touchdown pass. Yeah. And your guy got to go for it. He knows the zero blitz. He's thinking they're going to run a slant. They run slow go on him, Skip. Yep. And then and that was it. all she wrote. Okay. So, brings me back to a guy we're going to have on the show from the Super Bowl, I think, early in the week. Right. And his name is Deion Sanders. <laughs> and I'm his biggest fan. And you love him, too. I love him. I love that. That's hey, my dog. Deion Sanders reinvented the way cornerback was played. Mm -hmm. he, he changed the game. He took over games in ways that made him a transcendent figure. And there have been a lot of good quarterback, co Corner. excuse me, cornerbacks, but he was the best. Mm -hmm. So if I could read a quote from him from yesterday about whether Eli belongs in your Hall of Fame, Dion said, honestly, I'm not so sure what being a Hall of Famer means anymore. Football immortality used to be reserved for players who redefined their position, made a big impact on the game, or dominated their position for a period of time. The way the Hall is trending now, Eli will get in most likely because he won two Super Bowls. It won't be because he embodied any of those three points while in the league. It is what it is, man. Okay? We love Prime. <laughs> yeah, we okay? do. Okay? And yeah, and he's he, skipping the thing. Let me tell you something about Prime. If you notice, he rarely ever 
because he understands that his words carry credibility. That's true. He'll, he very rarely will he says, well, if you ask him who's the best corner, he'll name five or six. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who's the best defensive lineman? He'll name five or six. Because he doesn't, so he, he kind of stay clear. For him to say that, the hall should heed that what he's saying. Okay. Because <laughs> he's it, man. <laughs> he was the best at right. what he did. Yes. So he's looking down from Mount Olympus saying, hey, what are we doing now? Right. Come on. Because that's what we, Skip, that's what they normally say. Okay, in his era, the top five, okay, he played with Manning, he played with Brady, he played with Breeze, he played with Big Ben. Was he ever better, was Eli ever better thought of better than any of those guys? Mm -hmm. But you just mentioned his brother. So he is Peyton's brother. Yeah. He is Archie's son. Right. He is NFL royalty. He is. And I give you that. Right. And plus, he's a nice guy. He he's is. really a nice he guy. Is. And he, he never did anything wrong. Nope. You know, he's always... He never took any shots. No. He was always consistent after, before and after games. He really didn't have much to say, but right. he never had anything bad to say about anybody. Right. Okay? So, I don't know. I mean, he wasn't an all-decade player. He was never, he was never an all-pro. I don't know if he's ever led the league in touchdowns or passes nope. or anything like that, Skip. Mm -hmm. But like you said, when you look at his era, I thought, you you know, we're going to judge against era because we can't play the, compare the 2000s to the 40s, and we can, can't compare the 2010s to the 70s. Okay, compare him against the guys in his era. So where, so where does he rank? Hmm. In, his, in his era. I think you're making the case he doesn't belong, but, but you don't want to go there. But Skip, because, look, because I, I understand. I, if they said, okay, me, I, you know, I, you can't compare me and Ozzy because we threw the ball a little bit more in the Ozzy 80s. Newsom, Ozzy Newsom. Ozzy Newsom. And Kellen yeah. Winslow. Yeah. But Skip, look at the 90s. Yeah. Who did more than what I did? The numbers, the yards, in, in the touch, in, in the the, uh, uh, the Super Bowls. So you can say, okay, in the '90s, I was the all-decade first team on the uh, on all-decade team of the '90s. And then it came Tony Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez, and then it came yeah, Gronk. Gronk, okay. yes. Uh, and and uh, Antonio Gates was because I think Antonio yeah, was. Okay. And, all right. You had Witten. All those guys all were right. in there. But look, those Super Bowls, and he's a quarterback. Mm. Skip, they carry weight. Mm. They carry more weight than all they, all decade. They carry more weight than anything. He has those, and who did he beat, Skip? That's the thing, because you said Tom Brady's the greatest. He's 6-3. and three. And Eli, the guy that's 117 and 117, yep. hung two of those L's on him. Okay, I'll leave you with this. You just brought up my team, the Cowboys, and yeah. Jason Witten. Big fan, yeah. but if you ask me Hall of Fame on Jason Witten, even though I'm pretty sure he's going to get yeah. in, I have to think twice. Yeah. And if I think twice, I'm a no. Yeah. So Just for the record, think about things. They, they made it, but they, they, a lot of it skipped, and I hate to say this, they turned into the whole, whole of longevity. Okay. Oh, he played 18 years, right. but was he great yeah. or was he really good? Well, the first thing I look at is how long Eli's been around. I mean, you do go there. Yeah. Is it longevity? I mean, it, skip, if I, could let cans, if I could let 10 cans a day for 20 years, I believe at the end of those 20, I'm going to have a hell of a lot of cans. But what the hell have I accomplished? Mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll settle this one. This one's now, always going to be uh, a great discussion. We'll be doing this. We'll be doing this show. Now, hold on. Eli retired in twenty twenty. Uh, so twenty twenty five. When Eli's available, we'll be doing this show. Yep. And you will have that. We'll look Probably. back on this. <laughs> so true. to me, Eli was just a can collector. That's all. Oh. <laughs> With yep. the Super Bowls. There is that. No mercy. LeBron and the Lakers got back on track last night with a win over the Knicks in Madison Square Garden. The King finished with 21 points, with 19 of them coming in the first half. LeBron is now 44 points away from tying Kobe Bryant for third place on the all-time scoring list. He also had five assists and five steals. So, Shannon, give me a letter grade uh, for, you know, this trip to the Garden. I'm giving a C. Um, because, Skip, the first half, he had it going. This is the best I've seen LeBron James have it going in a half this year. I mean, the three ball was going, driving to the basket, his post-up turnaround, fall away, that, that MJ, Kobe, it was dropping. Yep. And so I'm thinking to myself, Skip, I'm like, LeBron going to go for about 35, 40 mm -hmm. tonight because he's feeling it. And something happened. I think I'm going to try to get in his head. He's like, I got 19 points with one assist, and we tied at the half. Now, I might drop 35, 40, but we can lose this game. I need to get the other guys involved. Okay. Because now it's shifted. You come out and look at him in the third quarter, he only took two shots. He made one. 
but he turned it more into a facilitator trying to get other guys involved. Made a conscious effort to get the ball to AD. Yep. AD, AD uh, what was AD last night? Um, but he's 13, uh, 7 mm-hmm. to 14, yep. 13 to 13 from the line. He, and so that's what I was like. I hadn't seen LeBron because he's been struggling with his shot a little bit lately. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to see him have one of those Madison Square Garden moments. Yeah. We've seen him have them. Yeah. And I was looking at it, and I thought, oh, yeah, we got this thing. We got it. And I was like, oh. Oh, we, we remember. Got, yeah, I said, like, we, we got it. We got this thing. We got this thing right now. And then it happened. Mm. I, I just think sometimes, Skip, the Lakers play down the competition. It was an eight-point ball game. You tried to coax me and give you – Get lose me a case of dew mm-hmm. trying to give you 15. Although it was hovering for a while up close to 15. <laughs> yeah, it got, I thought, it got uh-oh. The, it, got the th- it got the 13. Yep. But look, I think sometimes the Lakers play down to their competitions. They get careless with the basketball. LeBron had five steals. But they, the, the, the turnover, they turned the ball over too much and the reckless shots. Um, but I'm going to give him a C because I thought the first half was as good as he, we've seen him play in a long time in a half of basketball. Mm-hmm. And then the second half, he didn't, he, 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 it, it didn't go very well. So, for once, we have the same letter grade for your man, LeBron James. I'm giving him a C, but we're arriving there from very different directions. I'm giving him an A for the first half, but I'm getting him a flat F for the second half by his lofty standards. Mm -hmm. And I have a theory as to why that was, but just to your point... I thought in the first half he's going for 40 because that's what Jordan did. That's what Kobe did. That's what LeBron has done when they play the palace that is Madison Square Garden. It is the mecca of basketball. I've always said that the unfortunate aspect of of Madison Square Garden for Knicks fans is that the rival star is the only one they ever get to cheer for because they go there to to light it up and put on a Broadway show just near Broadway, right? right? Mm -hmm. And instead, this performance in the second half was way off Broadway by LeBron James. But in the first half, it was extraordinary. I thought it was 40-ish, and and he had 19 at halftime. Oh, 10 shots. Eight of 10 shots. Wow. Two or three from the three. Yeah. I was like, yeah, we got this one. And then all of a sudden, I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. And as the second half wore on, he looked disinterested and disengaged to me. Now, maybe something had happened at halftime where somebody said something he did not like. Maybe he was disappointed in his teammates' energy. Mm. I don't know what happened as far as internal squabbles that were going on, Mm -hmm. but he did not look right, and it became one of the weirdest second halves I've ever seen LeBron play because I'm thinking, (laughs) go. And then he played high minutes in the fourth quarter, and what do I always accuse him of? Mm -hmm. You're stat padding against a bad team. Well, I thought this was classic because this is still a losable game. So I thought he would at least go for 10 or 12 in the fourth quarter, and he went 0 for 4. And he only had one assist, so he was trying to distribute, but nobody seemed to be able to cash. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Theory. LeBron James, I always tell you, has the highest basketball IQ in the National Basketball Association. He is acutely aware of what is going on in the league. He knew full well that Zion Williamson's debut was going to overlap the Lakers at Knicks right. game, that Zion's was going to tip off on ESPN in New Orleans in the fourth quarter of this game mm-hmm. at Madison Square Garden. It looked to me a little bit like he lost interest because he knew the eyes of the NBA were no longer on MSG. They were on Zion. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's like, do I really want to muster this up now? Should I really take it that seriously? Because nobody's going to really care if I score 10 or 12 or 15 in the fourth quarter because all they're going to be talking about tomorrow is what that kid did tonight in New Orleans. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, and for me, like Skip, like I said, I, I think, you know, LeBron is a thinker. He, he doesn't have the mentality. Kobe, Jordan, James Harden gets yeah. it going like that. Yeah. They're going for 50. Yeah. They're trying to go for 60. And I don't Especially, think they second guess it or think. No, they no, just no. Go. No, they're not worried about, oh, my teammates, I need to get them involved. Nope. Mm-hmm. They're not thinking like that. But that's how LeBron, LeBron is wired. Di- he's wired differently than any other s- superstar that can score 50 but is so concerned about the, everybody else. Magic was not a guy that could go get you 50 on no. a given night. That wasn't him. So he, his game was always getting guys involved. But a guy that can get you 50, can get you in the 40s, but he's so concerned, like, I score 40 or 50 and we lose. What have I actually done? It, it means something to him 
to get Caldwell Pope, KCP's playing play really well. He is. Um, to get these other guys involved. And I think he made a conscious effort because AD struggled the other night, Skip. And I thought he's like, I got to get this guy rhythm because this is the guy. Mm. If we're to get, Skip, he's, AD is going to have to lead them in scoring in the playoffs. Now, I believe he'll lead, but he's going to have to bump it up. AD's going to be 30, he's going to have to be 30 and 13, 30 and 15 come playoff time. Okay, but he got him 14 shots to LeBron 16 for the whole game, so it wasn't like he, he took 30 shots. No, no, but I'm saying yeah. they fouled him a lot of those shots, too, because AD was 13 to 13. He was. Line. That's pretty so, good. So, yeah, so we, he got he, – AD, Skip, AD is, is, is the, really the mismatch now. He's the advantage that they have because the big guy is not fleet of foot enough. The guy that's fleet of foot enough is not tall enough, big enough. So AD is going to have to dominate these games. And, you know, Bron, like I was say, hey, I just go across the bay, drop that thing on Brooklyn tonight. Hmm. Put, that 40 gonna on put 40 on them. You got 40 for a case of dudes? Nah, I, I'm saying 28. He have about 11 assists, eight rebounds. Okay. I'll buy that. So I'm not going to bet against that. Okay. He, he better. He should. Yeah. I would agree. Hmm. Unless he load manages because oh. he's got, Oh, my goodness. He's got flu-like symptoms. He ain't no flu. He good. You, you never know. At least you own it, right? You see the way the Bron came with that thing last night? You know it. And he had that on his shoe. Yeah. It's a vibe. It's a big apple vibe. Yeah. I, didn't so we, like, I didn't like the shoe color last night. Nah, like, it's, it's, it's you like, the red, it just yeah. like, it clashes with the big apple. I know. It like, it's oh, a, I guess that's so I'm thinking like, like okay, he says a big apple vibe. I was like, oh, he's definitely going for 35, 40 tonight. Well, I thought he and was. He was oh, I and then in the second half, he had flu like symptoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened. <laughs> <laughs> or the body bag effect. It may be, you know what? You know what? It could have just affected him. Jenny! Maybe it Oh, for real, Jenny? Is that you now? Yeah. I mean, Ed to it, Jenny. It was just it Jenny took went a lot. Body bag. <laughs> it took a I lot like out that. of him. Something Ed to happened. Jenny. Something happened. Jalen Brown, <laughs> Prince Dunk. <laughs> no mercy. Well, police in Florida have officially issued a warrant for Antonio Brown's arrest following his involvement in an alleged attack on a moving company truck driver outside his home on Tuesday. Brown's trainer has already been arrested for his role in the incident, but Brown has not cooperated with the police's investigation for his part thus far. Brown reportedly threw a rock at the driver's truck and then forced his way inside the driver's side of the vehicle and struck him before being restrained. Shannon, what happens now? I just really hope and A.B. could come to his senses, but he can't because he's not thinking clearly and I'm not so sure there are people around him that he's listening to if they are trying to communicate that what A.B. doing is wrong. Skip, see, I'm not surprised by this because what did he think? Skip, he actually thought he was going to get to be an opportunity to play again in the NFL without going to talk to the commissioner. Yeah. Because they were sitting out, A.B., we need to talk to you like, I ain't going. I'm going to go play. So he actually thinks after a couple of days, the police will get that what happened, and he'll be fine. He'll be able to come on and go about No. You see, the thing is, Skip, he does, this thing, they're doing everything they possibly can. This is a high-profile person. The last thing the police want to do mm -hmm. is storm that house and have something go horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to use discretion. They're using discretion to the eight umpteenth degree. Yep. So they don't know if there's someone else in the house. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think his, his kid's mother and, the, and her, the kids, and she has left yep. since vacated. But they don't know if there's anybody else in the house. Yep. Because I can assure you, if this was a normal citizen and they thought he was in there by himself, A.B. would have been out yesterday. I would Because they'd have stormed the house. Mm -hmm. What A.B. doesn't understand. Now, in the, 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 the warrant that they issued, he's a gun carrying member who's known to be armed. Mm -hmm. That's very important. That's very important to note because they come in there. A.B. got a phone in his hand. He got an object in his hand. Given his erratic behavior over the last three, four months, mm -hmm. this thing can go horribly, horribly, horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. yep. And I don't think he understands the magnitude in which he's digging this hole. Skip, this is not going away. AB needs help. It's not funny. And I blame a lot, a, a lot of the people that look, watch him on YouTube and on social media. It's your fault. Yep. Because you gave him all those likes and you convinced him that he was doing wrong. My grandfather always said when you're a little boy, you feed anything, it'll grow. Mm -hmm. You feed an ego, it'll grow. You feed confidence, it'll grow. 
And they fed a AB's confidence. They fed his ego. Mm -hmm. And they convinced him that what he was doing is right when they knew it was wrong. Mm -hmm. But it sounded good because AB locked it back. AB retweeted what I tweeted. AB, you dead wrong in this situation, bro. But you're going, AB, I'm telling you, you don't want to go here because this thing, AB, if you don't come out of this house, something bad could possibly happen, bro. Mm hmm. But I still don't believe he's hit bottom yet, Skip. Mm. He said it's only going to change when he hits bottom. He ain't there yet. He's not there yet. And, I don't, and I'm not one of these guys that say, I told you so. But I, I didn't expect it to get here. But I told you the type of person A.B. was. I played the game too long. I've been around guys like A.B. Maybe not to that extent. But A.B., boy, this is a dangerous game you play in here. Mm -hmm. These cops are for real. And guess what? If something happens, ain't a jury in America will convince anybody that puts 10 in you. Mm. Because they seen your behavior. They seen the way you acted. The, the reward said you hit the guy's car, caused a uh, moving van, caused damage, forced your way in, and you beat him. First of all... And your trainer already got arrested. Yes. Mm -hmm. What kind of trainer is that joining in some foolishness? If I were to do something dumb, and my best friend's bucket, Keith Burns, mm -hmm. were to join in with me, I'm getting rid of them. <laughs> Yeah. You're supposed to be the brains of this operation. You see me doing something dumb, you're supposed to pull me back. Not co-sign it and join in. Mm. That's his problem. Too many times they've been around him. Yeah, but you right. Yeah, yeah, you right. Do it what A.B. wants to hear. Mm. Not tell him what he needs to know. Skip, this is, boy, he playing a dangerous, dangerous game here. It's, oh, you think locked up. Bro, you're not, in, you're not in Fort Knox. They can come get you. Kick you. What how that look like? The people in that neighborhood, they got they gonna have SWAT. Yeah. That ain't what they signed up for. You go to a gated community, the last thing you want, you trying to stay away from that. Mm -hmm. That's why you got the gated community. A B, man, you A B, boy, you better wake up. I'm gonna remind everyone, this is a felony warrant for battery, not a misdemeanor. Right. Because you can get in some bar fight and hit a guy in the yeah. face and it'll be a misdemeanor right. arrest. Or you shove a guy, push a guy, yeah. something, yes. yes. Felony. It's different. <laughs> very serious. They're not gonna play on this one. They're not gonna let you slide on this one. In what you referred to was from a TMZ report. The arrest warrant warns officers that Brown has a concealed weapons permit yep. and is quote unquote known to carry goes on. Brown had a firearm stolen out of Dade County in 2018. Officers should use caution when approaching Brown as he is known for being confrontational when dealing with police. Well, how do we know that? Because it was just a week ago, he, he went live stream with it mm -hmm. after he called the cops to settle a dispute with the mother of his three children, right? And what, and what, would the, what was he calling the cops uh, as he's recording it? Nothing we can say. Exactly. Not he was confrontational with the police. Mm -hmm. he, he got belligerent. He got verbally abusive to the point that the police athletic league said, we return your donation that you gave to us because we want nothing more to do with you. Well, that just happened. Wow. Wasn't it like a week that ago? That was a yes. week ago, I think. Okay. Skip, start from the beginning. What caused all this? He wouldn't pay his bill. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is reportedly we've, we've over a, payment. We've had a history of non-payment. Thank you. Non Thank you. the moving truck. The yeah. company wasn't going to pay the four Remember grand. the caterer? The, the celebrity chef. The athletic Thir trainer. 37,000. The artist. That was 7,000. Yes. artist. Non-payment, non-payment, So there's non something maybe he thinks people are so lucky to... To work for A.B. You should be glad you took for A.B. or draw a picture of A.B. So he's continuing to be defiant on Twitter yesterday saying they're just trying to slander me. No, they're, <laughs> they're really not. They're, they're just going to try to arrest you is what they're going to try right. to do. And... This has potential for tragedy. Yes! Because he is still so in, in his head, I'm, I'm Antonio Brown, and I'm doing right here. So yes. they, they can't take me in. Yeah, they yeah, can. They can. And they, they will. They will take yes. you in. Uh, I would prefer, I'm sure they would prefer you come out voluntarily. Yes. And not have this go because, Skip, and th this, this would, I mean, this would be news everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, how... I don't know if we've ever seen somebody fall this fast, this hard, mm -mm. this quick. And he, and he, Skip, he, there has to be something wrong with the individual that's doing things like this and thinks he's in the right. And it's always, I'm sorry. 
And then the moment he doesn't get his way, he takes back that apology. Mm -hmm. And then he lashes out even with greater venom. Mm. I, I, I don't know how he put himself in here and then think it's okay. And this trainer, man, that's... Every, look, man, A.B., I, come on, bro. You, you, be, you better than this. But remember, reportedly now, his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, has left him. And reportedly, the attorney that was representing him in the throwing the furniture off the balcony of the condo has also pulled out. So I don't know if he has representation. Not that people wouldn't line up to represent right. Antonio Brown. Right. But right now, he's rudderless. Like, I don't think he has anybody right. of, of note sort of advising right. him from a legal standpoint because the truth is the correct way to handle this now would be to to put on walk out the front door but, but to go down to, to go down to the yeah. hollywood police station well, you, you know what call you an attorney yeah call your attorney yeah. have them call say i'm bringing ab down ab's going to turn himself yeah. in yeah and, 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 I, and we're going to come down to, you don't have to storm his house. Okay. You don't have to have all these sirens going on outside. I'm A.B.'s representative. Right. We're coming down to turn ourselves in. To, to do it the right way. Yes. And he should put, like he wore shorts to that deposition for the right. furniture throwing right. thing. Don't, don't do it that way. Put on something nice. Don't, you don't have to put a tie on. But just, yeah, just, put a, you can put it. We can put it. You can put it up if we want to. Yeah. But he's going to be in the, he gonna be in the day kind of jumpsuit. Okay. That's what he's right. going to be in. I know. I, I got it. And you, you might have to spend... A night? Oh, he'll spend, he a night. spend a night. Night's been 20. He, boy, he better go on down there now. Because if he go down there Friday, he's going to stay there till Monday. <laughs> yeah, that's so a good point. He, he better, you better go on down. That's if they let him out. Because you know Skip, they're going to put him on a psych hole. Because you do understand he's a high pro life athlete that's not used to being in these situations. That's true. So they're going to they're gonna put him on a hole because, you know, everybody can't handle this. Everybody, oh, I, man, I do it. Everybody can't handle that time. Mm. I don't care if it's a day. I don't care if it's a month, five years. Everybody can't do that, Skip. A.B., a, look, it's one thing if you come up in a criminal activity. You know, I had homeboys going to juvenile since they were 11, 12. So when they when they got a nickel or a dime, it was nothing to them. Yep. As a matter of fact, they do something and go right back because that's all they know. A.B. don't know nothing about that life. Mm -mm. That life ain't for everybody. Oh, that's true. Hmm. So I'll just throw this out as a long shot possibility, maybe not long shot, given his recent behavior. Is it possible that he decides, I'm out of here, man. I'm gone. And he takes off and comes to L.A. to where he's going to spend a couple of months just until this blows over. I ain't going to get to L.A. Okay. He, can't, he, ain't big, he can't even get out of that neighborhood well, without them folks getting him. Okay. Was well, that where we are? Yeah, that's where we are. Are going to stake it out? Are they waiting? They ain't going. Okay. A.B. ain't going. A.B. is not going anywhere. Okay. A.B. AB's next place that he's going to rest his head is going to be in Dade County Jail. Mm. That's what AB's going. Is it Dade County Jail? I guess. Oh, it oh is. whatever. It is. He's going to be in some Hollywood kind of Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah, well, yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. But yeah. well, that's where he's going to be. I don't know the exact. <sighs> but he, all of his friends leaving him. You better be careful, cause if you, Skip, they put it in the warrant, so you know, Skip, they've already they, their sense have already heightened. Mm -hmm. I'm going into a situation I'm unfamiliar with. I don't know where his rooms are. I don't know where he's coming from. So they already they it ain't on his hip. It's out. I would think it would have to be it's out. out. It yeah. ain't no on my hip mm -hmm. waiting to see. It's out. So, A.B., you playing with fire, bro. Mm. You, you, you playing. They for real. This is, this is not the movie, Skip. <laughs> okay. Wow. His reality is not, is not real right now. Mm -hmm. When you went through the list of everything yeah. yesterday, too, how long we've been on this? Because I think there was shock at first. There was confusion. At times, we were kind of laughing about the situation. But this has taken a dangerous turn. Yeah. And pay people. Yeah. Bro, nobody works for you for free. Maybe them guys that hang around with you yeah. don't charge you to run errors and do stuff like that. But you can't get a service skip for free. Again, it's the same thing. The people want their money. He don't want to pay. It's very odd. And now we wait because that's really the latest. They're waiting for him, and we'll have to wait and see what is next for AD. No mercy. Zion Williamson did not disappoint in his first game with the Pelicans, dropping 22 points in only 18 minutes, including a wild stretch of 17 straight points in the fourth quarter that included four threes. Zion would then be pulled for the final stretch because of a minutes restriction, leaving New Orleans fans chanting, we want Zion, as the Spurs would go on to win 121-117. We're now joined by Fox Sports NBA analyst Chris Broussard. How are you? I'm great. How are you guys morning. doing? We have been talking about Zion for months leading up to this debut. What did you make of it? 
I was incredibly impressed. I, I got so much to say. All right, number one, <laughs> the fact that the moment wasn't too big for him. That's I mean, correct. as you said, everybody. this was the biggest Once. debut since LeBron James. I was at LeBron's first game, and it was similar. I mean, he played the whole game. You went to Sacramento. Yeah, wow. yeah. For huh. the New York Times, I wrote about that. And the next day, I talked to Larry Bird. He said, if he's not in the Hall of Fame within five years, something went wrong, terribly wrong. <laughs> yeah. So you knew right then. And Zion, I mean, even not just the moment, but the fact that you're playing in four-minute bursts, that had to be frustrating. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he didn't sulk. I mean, a lot of guys would have been like, oh, this true. is ridiculous. Let me get a like, rhythm. Right, right. And so when he got his chance, he was huge. Now, obviously, the three-point shooting. No one expects that to continue. <laughs> But if he can just shoot 35% from three, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. then it, it, for the next seven years till his athleticism wanes, you're talking about a superstar. Mm -hmm. and if he's wow. going to shoot like that, because what LaMarcus Aldridge did was what you're going, what most teams are going to do is give him, give him four feet, you know, and, and if he shoots it well from there, it's over. But also, tremendous rebounder. His energy and tenacity around the basket. Mm -hmm is huge, and we saw that last night, I think especially on the offensive end. I think I've compared him. I've said he's a new-age Charles Barkley. Barkley was a tremendous offensive rebounder mm -hmm. at that size. I think this guy is similar. Court vision, first, first quarter, right, first couple minutes, the pass to Brandon yeah. Ingram cutting across the lane. Hmm. And what I liked is that when he got a lot of rebounds, the one over Pirtle especially, he could dr dribble it Bring up it the up. floor. He and he hit, yeah, and he yeah. hit Etwan Moore. That fast break layup he hit him on yep. was perfect. So what I see, the last thing I'll say is this. He, I, what I love about him, and it d differentiates him from most of the big scorers in the league nowadays, he doesn't need to dominate the ball. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to make him easy to play with. So in theory, at least, he should be able to play with Brandon Ingram because Ingram needs the ball, yes. but Zion really doesn't. No. Last year, R.J. Barrett had the ball at Duke, and Zion still scored because he's mm. so efficient. So I love that about him. You don't have to run plays for him other than a few, you know, get him in the lane a right, little bit. Right. Uh, he's going to get – so what I see is this. A Draymond Green who can post and who's going to score 24, 25 points a game. I mean, that's, that's pretty darn good because he's – he can bring it up. He right. can pass the ball. He can make some plays. talking about a Draymond who could – he can get you 10 assists. I mean, right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, so uh, – I was I, I didn't expect this much, and I've said I said last night on our radio show, Ja Moran I think will be the better rookie, you know, have the better career out of these two. Okay. Maybe wow. I'm mistaken. Overall, I, I don't yeah, because I love Ja, but so Zion looked great last night. No, you had to be impressed with the fourth quarter. The yeah. first three quarters, you weren't impressed. No. <laughs> you, right. you was about to say, well, other than that one pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you was about right. to say, and you mentioned about the Duke thing, much to skip chagrin because when we were talking college basketball, it was so upsetting to him that Coach K put the ball in R.J. Barrett's hand oh. and not Zion Williams' oh. hand. So he come in here oh, banging God. the table by that. Especially he, against Michigan <laughs> State. Yeah. He yeah. Right, that's true. I got a couple cases to do off that. But look, <laughs> the fans have hope in New Orleans now, and the team. They believe they can get that eight spot, Skip. They believe they can get that eight spot. They, even though they lost to San Antonio, in San Antonio they fluctuate eight, nine, eight, nine. But, but they believe they can catch fire here once this team plays together a little more. They can get hot again. True, uh, uh, B.I. was, he, he suffered last night. He, he shot six of 22. B.I.'s better than that. Yeah. I, I believe he should be an all-star. The West, if you count them out, I hear you, but if you count out That's the hard. players, it's just yeah. but, but too many other should, guys. He should be in over Paul George. Paul George missed a bunch of games, and he's missing games. Let that see. All right, that might. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, because, but, but I believe he should. But it's going to be tough. I agree. But the fourth quarter, yeah, that was, that was something that we don't see. We've seen, not rookies, we've seen guys get hot like that. We've seen Steph, Clay, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, KD, Braun, got Kyrie gets cooked. We've seen guys, but not rookies, Skip. Not after being out for three, the first three months of the basketball season and come in on a minutes restriction. And athletes are rhythm players. They need rhythm. They need time. You can't hey, play two minutes. Okay, come up, sit with me. Yeah. Play three minutes. Come up here and sit with me. No, they need to get going. It's like it's like soon as I get a break of sweat, you get me to come. I got to get cold again. I get back in and break another sweat. Now you take me out and I got the half. So. It wasn't until they let him play an extended stretch in the fourth that he can get his rhythm, and he got a quick re you know block the hurdle, block the shot. He got the rebound. I said, "Oh, see, you, you play with fire now. You done let him, you done, <laughs> you done skip, you done let started feeding the guy." And then they throw him a lob. 
He loses. Skip, there are only a handful of guys that can do this. He was going to dunk it. He lost it. And in one motion, lays it up off the glass. Mm -hmm. And so that lets you know, okay, and now the threes. They're letting him shoot, shoot around threes. I don't know. I'm not saying you got to hug up on him. But you got to respect the guy's right. game more than that right. now. That's not like Andre. They can make it seem like it was Andre Drummond or Dwight Howard out there shooting threes. I mean, he, Skip, he got a better shot than he got a better right. stroke than that. He's got a nice stroke. <laughs> it looked, those yeah. are pure. I know. A little, a little line drive-ish. Nice, maybe. Mm. But they were, I mean, those two. They, were, they were nine, yeah. no doubt. So, yeah, he, 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 lived, he lived up to the hype. I think everybody wanted to see what he could do. Uh, I'm sure people want to see a, a few more dunks because he, he's a highlight. And he gave you what you wanted. It was in a short burst. It was in a small package. But it was everything I know everybody hoped and thought it would be. Hmm. So, for three quarters last <laughs> night, we're going back and forth in our heads about what should we lead Undisputed with tomorrow morning? <laughs> and after three quarters, I said, there's no way we can lead with we're Zion's back. debut because <laughs> it's such a disappointment. Right. It's so deflating. Yeah. It's such a letdown. It's like a 285-pound letdown. <laughs> Because all I saw was a little out of sync and maybe out of shape. And I saw fumbling and stumbling. And I saw five turnovers through three quarters. And I saw tentative. And I saw a little underconfident. Like, do I fit in? And I heard Alvin Gentry say in a between quarters interview, he's just playing so conservatively. And I keep saying, you, you got to go, man. And <laughs> I'm not sure the fourth quarter was supposed to be an extended stretch. Right, right. I said, agree. Hmm. I agree. I think he finally just got sick and tired of having to recalibrate his RPM to where he said, okay, I know they're going to yank me after three or four minutes. So this time when I get my fourth little stint, I got to really take advantage of it. Right. Yeah. And when he hit the floor, here we went. And I got to show that play one more time just because it took my breath away because I know Jakob Pertl, and he's seven feet, one inches tall. I got a picture taken with him last year in a gym in Las Vegas. He is a huge human being. And it started with Zion. Look, look, Pertl gets inside position on him on the missed shot. And look, Zion goes up over him without really fouling him. I didn't think it was a foul. And snatched it from him and then made that two-hand chest pass on the break just for an easy deuce for each one more. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking... How did you do that exactly? That's six six against seven feet one, right. and then as you point out, because he played point guard in high school, he's he can lead the break with anybody, yeah. right? Yeah, no doubt. Okay, that's when it took my breath away, and that started this stretch. <laughs> and I got to tell you, maybe maybe I'm overreacting, but I was getting goosebumps last night because I have not seen an explosion like that since MJ and Kobe were in their primes because they were capable of, of dominating a game inside and outside at the rim and from three the way he did for just three right. minutes. And I'm going to remind everybody, three minutes is only one-fourth of the fourth quarter. So if you multiply 17 points times four, that would be 68 points in a quarter. <laughs> but, but just to put it in perspective, right. he was on pace to score 68 in the fourth quarter. <laughs> it's hard to do that, man. And I know he got hot-handed suddenly from three. And we've seen, listen, when Clay Thompson scored 37 in a quarter against Sacramento, it's extraordinary, but it's all catch and shoot heat check. It's just where he's just so hot right. from three, he's just draining right. threes. Well, this was both. This was rim, distance, right. rim, distance. And he played above the rim because, you know, you, we see James Harden get hot just about every other night, skip from three and driving the ball. But James Harden is not going up, taking the ball off the rim, putting it back uh, in, for, uh, <laughs> putting it back up over uh, a seven-footer. No, and then if, if I could interrupt this for just a second, there are the threes. But then he goes down to the other end a couple of minutes later, and he gets blocked by Jakob. And here's another three, and and he gets he gets blocked by Pirtle, and before Pirtle can find the basketball, watch, he he blocks his shot, and then Look in a flash, right. in a flash, <laughs> it's like quicker than the eye, he <laughs> retrieves his miss. And, and goes up and under with it. And Pirtle's just standing there like, what just happened to me? Right. I thought I just blocked his shot. And the thing is, in today's NBA, number one, it's easy to get to the rim because spacing. usually guys are running you off the three-point line yep. and then the spacing. So if they're going to give him the three, maybe he can hit it, you know, one out of three times. Right. And if they get up on him, he can get to the rim and there's nobody there to stop you. Mm. And I think last night, a lot of his great play came, we used that center. 
if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Well, he, 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 he was the five in the fourth quarter in yeah. that stretch. Right. right. So he there can wasn't play a center. center in today's NBA. Okay. Right. I mean, there's no Patrick Ewings no. and yeah. Alonzo Mourning. You know, Line nobody's no going. Posts. Right. Even an AD. AD's not going to do a, st- like, all games stay on the block and yeah. just expose this 6'5 yeah. guy. Right. right. So well, He always says, I don't want to play five. Right. Right. So, I mean, that. It, they I, See, I think he's on a great team for him. Because Lonzo, as you know, last month, Lonzo's – maybe the best thing for him was to get away from dad, I agree. get away from L.A., and go to yeah, New Orleans. Different. But he's been great the last month. Yeah. So you got a pass first point guard. Zion himself can move the ball. You got Drew Holiday, who hopefully he stays there because mm-hmm. well, they want to see how it works. Because I'm, I'm hearing Ward say this: now that they got everybody back, they want to see how they see how it works. Yeah. yeah, see how it plays out and see if they can make a push. Probably if they lose ground on that eighth seed. I can see them Trey possibly mo- moving on from Holiday. But they, I, I think they got a shot. They're only three and a half games out. But going forward, even if they don't make the playoffs, like this is a nice team in Ingram mm-hmm. for him to be on. But yeah. So hey, they, they, they're not just nice. They're, they're like must watch yeah. to me. Right. Oh, That's yeah. fun, no, man. This is why they've been on every every week. Yeah, uh, like up and Zion hasn't been there. Uh, yeah, because they, they expect Zion right. to be there. But they're going to get up and down. They're going to get in the uh, 120s more times than not. They're going to be 120s, 130s. And that's what people want to see. Win, lose, or draw. I want to see points. It's just like football. Skip, people don't want to see no 10-7 no ball game. No, they, they want to see 55-45. That's what pe- people like scoring. Yeah. And, and the Pelicans get up and down. So in the end, would I have liked to see Zion finish the game? They would have won if he had finished the mm-hmm. game because they, they went a point yeah. ahead from 15 yep. down. But I was okay. I know they have a plan, and it's, yeah. it's a solid sound right. plan to make sure he comes completely back from his knee right. surgery. I think Alvin wanted to go a little deeper with right. him, but the medical people are saying – Absolutely not. I, I was watching some guys talk about this on, earlier mm-hmm. this morning, and they were talking about how he, he was coming down on one foot mm-hmm. and he's got to come down on two. Mm-hmm. But my thing is this. You don't want him thinking too much. Yeah, right. Like that, the play you just mentioned right. with the block mm-hmm. shot, get, get the real. that's instinctive. Right. If he's out there worried about, okay, let me come down with two, let me. <laughs> you just got to let. Yeah. You, you At some point, you got to say, you know what? Just go we'll do what we can, but you play. Right. If you get hurt, it yeah. just wasn't meant to be. But mm. you and just when you're gotta playing play. to not get hurt, that's often right. when no things good. happen. You so you can't be much. thinking about it when you're playing. I hope no one, everyone didn't go to bed before that one. Because I started <laughs> to doubt did. the game. I started getting ready for bed. Then I went back. I'm like, wait a second. I was, what is he you doing were right, right now? Skip. It was, it was ridiculous. Uh, I don't mind, Skip. I was flipping the channel, though. I was like, I was flipping the channel. I didn't do it. A little bored at the beginning. What am I going to do with two? What am I going to do with two, three, and one? Because that's what he. What'd you flip to? Judge Judy? No, I was just flipping the channel. I'm watching the impeachment trial. You know, oh, he was <laughs> rotating. I'm just going back, and as soon as I turn back, he got going. You would have had to talk about the turnovers because oh. he kept losing yeah. his dribble, which I think was rust. But yeah. you know, that's the way it ended. Had. The taste of the potential. Oh. They're at home against the Nuggets tomorrow night, so hopefully, it's a little Ooh. bit more. Where well, you got Jokic? A little bit more. A little bit more. You got to deal with Joker. <laughs> be Maybe a- Joker's <laughs> got to deal with him. <laughs> Chris, thank you. No mercy. Jimmy G is getting ready for his first Super Bowl start. And, you know, some questions have come up about how he got from New England to San Francisco in the first place. According to a report, the 49ers were stunned that Bill Belichick only wanted a second-round pick in exchange for Garoppolo. San Francisco was prepared to counter with a larger offer, but that never became necessary. Interesting to think about it that way. Shannon, how should Kraft feel about Belichick giving away Jimmy G? He didn't give him away. You told him to trade him. He did. He did. Coach Belichick did what Mr. Kraft asked him to do. He shouldn't feel any kind of way. I want you to trade Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, had he said, I want you to get me a first and a third. Mm. I want you to get me multiple picks for Jimmy G. And Coach Belichick does this. Okay, I get it. But you can't complain about it. You interfered. The one time you interfered with Coach Belichick in a football decision. Mm -hmm. So now I live with the result. Skip, this kind of reminds me of what Coach Belichick did. Here's a true story, Skip. There was a lady in Australia that she suspected her husband was having an affair because he was going to poker night with the boys. Come to find out, she tells him, he ain't going to poker night. Got a little blonde on the side. Mm -hmm. So guess what she does? She lists his $100,000 plus Porsche Mm -hmm. for sale for 20 k People think it's a joke. Guy comes by. You selling that car, you do know that's a Porsche, valued at over $100,000. She's like, yeah. Mm. Have yeah. fun. <laughs> Sold his car. 
That's what you call out of spite. <laughs> hey, out Cole, of spite. So that's, now you know. That's Cole good. Bell, Coach Belichick say, oh, you want me to get rid of my guy? Then I go. I will give him away <laughs> out go. of spite. <laughs> Am I right? That's exactly what happens, Get Bailey. You know it. Jimmy G, now granted, I love the fact, this is what Coach Belichick did. Coach Belichick had to put Jimmy G in a situation. He felt the best situation to put Jimmy G in that was going to make him look ultimately good was San Francisco. Because if he puts Jimmy G somewhere and he fails, people like Skip Bennett going to say, that's the guy Coach Belichick wanted to replace Tom Brady. He gives him to Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan gives Jimmy G and they go to the Super Bowl. Wow. Mm-hmm. They go to multiple Super Bowl. There you go, Bob Kraft. You remember? Now, I had this. That now, we got two more years of Tom Brady where we could have had 12 more years of Jimmy G. Hmm. Bob bye Even though Shannon Sharp keeps telling me the X factor for the 49ers, <laughs> the, the factor you can't really trust is Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm just telling you. Okay. I'm telling you how Coach Bill You know how Coach Bill is making it. Very thought out. And by, plus, you also get him out of the AFC. Now, Skip, I don't believe he was ever going to send him to Cleveland. He still, ha- even though all the people that was in Cleveland, when he was there and, and the guy that fired him, Art Modell, rest his soul, yep. is no longer there. But it's the Browns. Mm-hmm. So he, was okay. ne- he knows that's dysfunction. All right. And he knows that's going to impact Jimmy G. Good. So he has got to. It. But another thing, Skip. Uh, Coach Belichick is very, very fond of Kyle's father, Mike Shanahan. Your coach. And he, and they're very good because Coach Belichick says, the guy, one of the offensive guys that gave me the most problems was Mike Shanahan. He has the utmost respect for Mike. Therefore, he has the utmost respect for Mike's son and Kyle Shanahan. Mm. But Skip, this was about, yes, he was upset that uh, Mr. Kraft ordered him to do what he knew was right is that says, yeah, we can have Tom for a few more years or we can have 12, 14 years of prosperity with Jimmy G Mm -hmm. because he's seen Miami's still looking for Dan Marino. Mm -hmm. Buffalo, maybe, maybe not, have have Jim Kelly. Mm -hmm. And Coach Belichick said, if you leave this path, yeah, we got another Super Bowl too, but we might get five more. So instead of being a six-time Super Bowl champ, we could have been a 12-time Super Bowl champ by the time I'm all said and done with this. Mm. That's why he did what he did. I'm sorry, Skip, but he did it out of spite. He did it out of spite, and I still can't believe this wasn't a bigger story. And maybe it was, and we just didn't know about it. Maybe internally it was a huge story. But this is close to being a fireable offense. Mm -hmm. You had a market for a young, on-the-verge quarterback who had played some games at a pretty high level for you. He was very valuable. Right. I mean, somebody might have gone so far as to give two first-round picks for him. Oh, well, he's at least the first and a third. At least, right? Yeah. Maybe two firsts if somebody was desperate right. enough. And you made one call out of spite to one young coach that you <laughs> love and said, hey, will you give me a two for Jimmy Garoppolo? And Seth Wickersham reported that they the 49ers it, were so stunned. Would you have it? They thought, uh, we better prepare a bigger package just because he's probably posturing. Yeah. And on second call, they find out, no, no, that's all I want is a two. And who called huh? the, there you go. Who on the first offer says, okay, this is what we'll <laughs> take. And it's so low. That's I'm right. trying to buy a home in Malibu to do says I take two million for it. You do know the house worth like 12 million. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. And that's what they're looking at like, you only want a two? Mm. You called us. We didn't call you, Skip. They, he, you called them. He started. He texted Kyle and yes. said, would you, would you give me a two? That's almost like a joke. Would you give me a two for Jimmy Garoppolo? Ha ha. Yeah, I'll yeah. give you a yeah, two. Hey, Skip, you what two. if Kyle takes back? No, I'll give you three, though. <laughs> <laughs> Probably could have so, gotten it. Then I looked back at the piece that Seth Wickersham wrote, which mm-hmm. was outstanding. The expose, which appeared back in January of 2018. Okay. That they tried to shoot down. Yeah, they tried to shoot it down. And the headline was, for Kraft, Brady, and Belichick, is this the beginning of the end? Mm -hmm. And in this story, this laid all the groundwork for what was about to transpire, which was that in October of that that 2017 season, Mm -hmm. that Belichick first had to meet with Robert Kraft and that Robert Kraft laid down the law about we're going forward with Tom whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. And then Belichick met with Brady and that meeting, according to Wickersham, ended with 
a little blow up, quote unquote, according to a source. Wow, between Brady and Belichick. Uh, yeah, you tried to replace me, Skip. Okay. So it says the previous spring that, that Garoppolo had been in high demand. Yes. High demand. That would be after they won the Atlanta Super Bowl, mm-hmm. after they came back on the Because Falcons. remember, Skip, that was the four-game suspension for Brady at the it start was. of the season. Correct. And Jimmy G started 2-0. Oh, he got hurt. There you go. So then just two weeks before the November 1st trading deadline, we're still in the 2017 season, that according to staffers, Belichick again met with Robert Kraft, and that meeting ran way long into the day, and it ate up all the meetings that Belichick was supposed to have with his staff. Right. And so everybody was on high alert, mm-hmm. pins and needles, what's going on. And Belichick returned from that meeting furious and demoralized, said Seth Wickersham, according to friends. So he was told, you are going to have to trade him. And this concludes that, I'm going to read this line. Belichick, having always subscribed to the philosophy that it's time to go once an owner gets involved in football decisions, left the impression with some friends that the current dynamic was unsustainable. Mm. That's all the way back in the 20. 17 season. Mm-hmm. So that just says he's about to be out. And there were reports around that time yeah. that he pursued interest. You know, sh- he showed yeah. quiet interest in the Giants yeah. and in the Redskins also mm-hmm. just to see, would you be interested? Could right. we, could we right. have a match here? Right. And apparently it didn't click on either front. Right. So that left him. <laughs> one of the staffers said that Brady won. That was the conclusion. Brady won. Belichick lost. So he rebelled, and out of spite, he gives away Jimmy G. And to me, that's sabotage, man. (laughs) That's sabotaging your your patriot future. But here's the thing. The old term, Skip, circle back. Yeah. He's going to circle back with Mr. Kraft on this situation again. You know that. Everybody knows that. He's circling back. Okay, Bob, you see what that guy is. Now, San Francisco got their quarterback for the next decade. Mm -hmm. You believe Tom Brady's going to play another decade. So what are we doing? So when Tom Brady drops off a cliff, Mm -hmm. Skip, even if it's not next year or the next year, is Tom Brady playing another decade? So then where do we go, Bob? Do you know how this thing ends? Do you know how it ends? When you do not have a bridge from an all-time great player to the next at that position, Mm -hmm. is that what you want? Because all you've known is success, Bob. Yeah, you had a few lean years. But Mm -hmm. you remember, you bought the team in 94, and in 96, you were in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then five years later, you had won the Super Bowl. So basically, in your 20, 20, what, 26 years, you've gone to nine Super Bowls. So basically, every third year, Mr. Kraft, you're in the... He calls Bob. Bob, you're in the Super Bowl. Yeah. So guess what happens when you don't have that great player? Mm. It's every 10 years or 15 years if you're lucky. Kansas City, Skip, this is their first Super Bowl in how long? <laughs> 50 years. 50 years. 50! Oh, yeah. Well, Robert Kraft, in short order, is going to have to, to me, choose between Brady or Belichick. I, I, Skip, I believe if he chooses Brady again, I think Cole Belichick might hit That's the what floor. I'm saying. That's Cole what Belichick I'm saying. might hit the floor. Cole yep. said, I got, hey, I got my coat. I'm going to get my hat. I'm yep. up out of here. Right. I don't know where he'd go. Maybe he'd take a year off. And By everybody, it, uh, what you mean, where'd he go? Yeah. There's 31 other teams that are going to find their coach on spot to get You think it. so? Well, it might not happen immediately, but... He, and he'll give him the kind of control. How much you want? Mm-hmm. Put it like this here. If Matt Rule got $7 million a year, John oh. Gruden got 10 million, well, how much Cole Belichick worth? 20 I mean. 20 It feels like that would be everything. easy, considering so, his Robert Kraft. Can, 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 can a, a coach get part ownership? Because mm. he's going to get him something. So, to your point, for 20 years, Robert Kraft has had a virtual joyride <laughs> of an owner. It's, it's been tough. like... Everything's coming up roses until now. Now you got a problem. Because you know what? Everybody, see, the thing is, Mr. Crab, like you said, he had a great joy ride. He's riding. Oh, everything going good. But when the car breaks down, who do they look to? The driver. That's Bill Belichick. Mm-hmm. So now yep. when things go bad, they're going to say, well, Mr. Crab, they're going to say Bill Belichick lost his touch. Yeah. Hmm. When Bill Belichick had this thing planned all along, he'd been sitting in his office working those hours. And then the final point for the 49ers, getting breaks. Here, you can have Jimmy G for a two. And then what happened, which is lucky, unlucky? He tears, he tears up his knee. But what happens? You get to go 4-12 and 12 and oh, you get Joey Nick, Bosa. Uh, Nick, Nick Bosa. Bosa. Nick yeah. Bosa. It's you get so Nick Bosa. true. Wow. But Skip, You're in the Super Bowl. The way Bowl. it has flipped yeah. for them. You right. knew Kyle Shanahan can coach. 
when he's taking Mullins, yeah. he's taking C.J. Beathard, mm -hmm. and they're not getting blown out in these games. Uh -uh. They're close. He's got guys that practice squad guys at best, mm -hmm. throwing for 280, 300 yards. So you knew if he had someone. Hey, you, you're right. <laughs> and, hey, listen, John Lynch had zero credentials when he was picked yeah. for that job. Yeah. He, yeah. For, he cold called Kyle and just said, hire me. Yeah. yeah. And guess what? He's done a really He's done good a job. a really good job. It, it, it helps. Because I know his dad very well. Still uh, Mike. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mike's job is he ain't coaching, but he breaking down tape. You got it. Mentor. I agree. All part the of time. It, yep. that, that's his new role now. I, I don't think Mike wants to coach anymore. He don't want to coach anymore. His coaching now is making sure his son mm -hmm. maximize his coaching ability. Yep. And he's making trying to make Kyle's job as easy as yeah. possible. Yeah, it's like what you said, though. If Jimmy G wins this thing, Bill Ooh. might walk into his office seat. Hey, Skip, let me tell you what's going to happen. Told you so. If the 49ers win this game, Bill Belichick going to go up Mr. Kraft's office like this here. <laughs> now what? Next. Exactly. <laughs> He's 28 years old, Jimmy G. He really only has made 28 career starts if you include the past two <laughs> playoff games, which is crazy. No mercy. Donovan McNabb pulled no punches this week, saying that he blames Terrell Owens for breaking up the Eagles in the early 2000s, just months after <laughs> losing to the Patriots in Super Bowl 39. Owens' offseason antics of driveway sit-ups and ordering pizza for reporters are the types of things that McNabb says prevented the Eagles from reaching their full potential. So, Shannon, uh, whose side are you on here? <laughs> <laughs> You already laughed. Yeah, why they do this? Why is uh, uh, T.O. the scapegoat for everybody? <laughs> they blamed him in Dallas. The reason why Tony, Ro Tony Romo and Jason Witten. Now, we kill Odell for being in Cabo, for being in Miami. And we know super two people that went to Cabo didn't they skip. And I killed them both. <laughs> you did kill them for mm -hmm. that. I don't agree with I don't agree with Donovan blaming T.O. for their problems. Skip, the tip, team that's run its course. Now remember, Skip, they had went to four uh, uh, NFC championship game before T.O. Mm. <clears throat> Who fought with that, Donovan? Oh, we ain't gonna play T.O. Okay, okay, I get, I get skipped. T.O. in the Super Bowl, that one they lost. Nine catches, a buck 22, broken ankle. T.O. wanted a new contract. And this is why, Skip Bayless, players normally stay out of contracts when it comes between the player and the team. Donovan was public. Brian Westbrook should get a new contract. But he was mom when it came to T.O. getting his money. So T.O. took that as a slight. Oh, you think he could get, he should get his money, but I shouldn't? Now, T.O. says, and I don't know how true it is. I mean, you'd have to ask Donovan. But T.O. said this started when they were at the, playing the Giants. And he ran a route and he was open. And he came back and said, hey, Don, I had him on that one. He said, Donovan looked at him and told him to shut the F up. He said, he say, Shannon, <clears throat> I, he just worked me speaking verbatim. He said, man, I'm like you. I come from the country. You don't talk to me like that, but I swaddled it and let it go. I knew, and I let it go. But he said it wasn't the same after that. Yep. And Remember I just... They were like soulmates wow. the first yeah, camp. They were yeah, roommates yes. and soulmates. Skip, I don't get the... Why, why is it so... Everything that went wrong with a team. Mm -hmm. If Teal, he broke up San Francisco, he broke up Dallas, and he broke up Philly, and he broke up uh, uh, Cincinnati, bro. Come on, stop this. It's easy. Teal is low-hanging fruit. He is a lightning rod, Skip. He is. He's a very polarizing figure. And if it goes wrong, but you didn't say anything about him getting them, what, 15 touchdowns? You ain't say nothing about him the way he played, becoming an all-pro? Mm -hmm. Nobody ever says how well he played. They only talk about the negative. Mm. I'm going to disagree with you on this one, Donovan. And even if, that be, if, even if that was true, what do you hope to accomplish by saying it now? Mm -hmm. Now, T.O. says that, you know, I got some information that T.O. don't do that. Don't do that, T.O. Let, just, let just let it go. Just let, just let it go. Mm -hmm. You know your truth. And someone trying to portray you a certain way when you know that's not to be true, don't, don't get into it. Don't, 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 don't go low like that. Don. Donovan should have just, just, Skip, it's over. It's over. And um, I'm going to disagree with this. T.O. Didn't, didn't break the Eagles up. The Eagles had run their course. Five straight NFC Championship games and only got to one Super Bowl, Skip. It happened. It's over. Okay. So, you and I have gone back and forth about this for four NFL seasons. Yes. Terrell Owens and I have gone back and forth on this 15 different times. <laughs> and I think we might have him on at the Super Bowl, yeah. so maybe it'll be 16 so. times. <laughs> okay. 
I'm a little surprised Donovan went public with this, but he went private with me on this a long time ago. So I know the gory details of this from Donovan's perspective, his viewpoint. Right. And I also work closely with, in the quote, Brian Dawkins was Donovan's roommate during this turbulent time. Right. I know Brian very well. I've heard all the T.O. stories from Brian. I work closely with Hugh Douglas, who play, was a leader on this team mm-hmm. also. And I've heard even gorier stories from Hugh Douglas because he and T.O. did not get along. Right. And there was one locker room confrontation near the sauna and whirlpool that got almost physical. Yeah. And Hugh said, if you want to go right now, let's go right here. And he says that Terrell said no. So I've heard all this before, and I covered Terrell in the Bay Area, and I've told you this before. At first, for the first month I covered those 49ers, Jeff Garcia to Terrell Owens, it was an electric combination. Yes, it was. And they were pretty good under Steve Mariucci. He was known as one of the better play callers, and Bill Walsh still was advising and right. sort of being the Mike Shanahan mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of game planning right. for Steve Mariucci. And for the first month, I loved T.O. I found him smart, funny. I, I enjoyed talking to him. Right. Had one long sit-down sort of interview with him. And about a month in, a team leader who will go nameless pulled me aside and said, what are you doing? You don't <laughs> get it. This guy is, and it's the old line, this guy is tearing us apart. Wow. And I got to know Terry Donahue, the former coach at UCLA, who was then the GM of the 49ers, and he finally concluded to me privately, he has just become more trouble than he's worth. He is supremely talented, and he plays as hard as anybody has ever played this game, plays with a rage, Mm -hmm. but he is impossible to deal with on a daily basis, and it's too much for my football team to put up with, so we are going to deal him, and you remember how it went. Tried to send him to Baltimore, and then it wound up in Philly. Right. Where Andy Reid was like, "Thank you, God, I got a." Yeah, the free agent, the, the, the paperwork yeah. somehow, they, they and then they said it. Yes, up. but he was about to be, and I think it would have been really good because Ray was leading that yes. locker room. Yes. Oh, you okay. weren't there, obviously, but no. it was it was Ray Lewis and a vet, and it was Ed Reid there. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, yeah, it yeah. was there. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so it would have been a really veteran locker room, mm-hmm. and maybe. Maybe he would have sort of right. blended right into that. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think Suggs has All gotten right. there also. I believe Suggs was there. Okay. So then this happened in Philly, and then we come to Dallas. And I just happened to work with a lot of players and knew a lot of players on that team, and it got at least as bad in Dallas. Mm-hmm. It got so bad that one player told me that Jason Witten and Terrell got into it on the practice field before a practice, and that Jason said, let's just get it over with right here, right now, and that Terrell said, no. Mm-hmm. So here we went again. And to your point, it, it, it feels like he became the scapegoat. And you could be to some <laughs> degree right about it because he wasn't all the, the, the right. evils of the... It's right. like all the evils of all three teams sort of got dumped no, no, on yeah, Terrell. Right. But, but he could be difficult to right. deal with. And I think even Terrell would admit, yeah, at times I had some issues going on mm-hmm. because he has had some yeah. issues. So... God bless him. He got in the Hall of Fame. It took, what was it, three tries? Mm-hmm. Three. But he got in, and you were very happy. You know, yeah. in a way, I'm happy for him because I, I still like him. I, I don't. Yeah. Skip, yeah. the thing is with Teal um, and his upbringing, you know, it's, 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 I'm not saying, I'm not excusing Teal's behavior for some of the things that he's done, but it offers you an explanation with how he was raised and by his grandmother. But let me tell you how Teal is. I know Teal, and I got to, I talked to him, um, I think we were in Denver for an all-star game yep. at okay. Michael Jordan's party. Michael Jordan had a party out there. And I remember wait, wait, talking... how long ago? Skip, this was 2004. Oh, okay. 16 way years back. ago. So, right. Yeah, way back. And Skip, he told, he says, this how I am. He says, and then Skip, he says, this how I am. If he feels you wrong him once, he'll never forgive you. He's done. It ain't no, I'm sorry, wow. I was wrong. He's done. He felt that Mariucci and he felt other coaches and he felt other players wronged him and they blamed him for everything. If they came back to him right now, he'd just like he'd just look at him like and keep it moving. That's how he is, Skip. That's he 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 will not, he will never let anything other T O, bro, you gotta let that go. He's like, man, I can't. He's hey, like, I, I got when when we have him on the show. It's like an upset if I can get him to look me in the eye for like four <laughs> seconds, right? Because he just mostly talks to you. Yeah, yeah. He, but oh. but, that, but that's like, and I, I've, all, I've always I've always liked you. I've always talked to him, and I and I think 
I think he he knows I get him because I was raised by my grandfa- grandmother, he, and grandfather, he does. and plus same you've, you've had his back. Yes, yes. It, it, but when he's when he's wrong, and I'm like, you you wrong, T.O., you wrong I'm in this so. situation. You know, everybody had a problem with him dancing. I'm like, he danced because y'all let him in the end zone. Keep him out. <laughs> He won't be dancing. I ain't never seen nobody dancing from outside the club. They dance when they get inside the club. You don't want them to dance. Keep them out the club. Well, the club is the end zone. <laughs> but Skip, look, you can't. Keep them out. Skip. I like it. Donovan, how long Donovan been retired? Five, six years? Skip, this was back in 2000. Longer than Feels that. like longer. Yeah. Longer. Skip, okay. The Super they went they uh they lost in 2005 I think that was the 2005 that was the last of the uh, mm-hmm. the, the Patriots run before they started a new run back in in the 20, 20, 13, 20 14. But. Nope. You're talking about this 15, yeah. 16 years ago. Mm-hmm. You're talking about he broke up that team. Why so what, what What? about those other four previous Super uh, uh, mm-hmm. NFC Championship games that you got to? You lost to Carolina. You lost to Tampa. What, so, so whose fault was that? But their argument back to you would be, we won two playoff games to get to that Super Bowl with no Terrell, right? Yes. Okay. So you know why he unleashed this? Because trust me, the bitterness is deep and oh, yeah. it lingers. Yeah. But Skip, you do remember, like the last year, Donovan got hurt. T.O. missed some games, and before they finally sent him away, but he missed some games. So you factor that in: the quarterback gets hurt, your star receiver gets, you know, is missing games. Wow. I mean, I'll never forget the first press conference in Philly. Andy Reid introduced him as Terrell Owens, yeah. and and. Terrell said, Coach, it's Terrell. And, and when I heard that, I said, uh-uh. No. Jeez, yeah. I've struggled with that yeah. before. But I'm not going to get it wrong anymore. We've said his name just, enough just, the right he, way. And it would have came out better just saying T.O. <laughs> T.O. <laughs> I hope we do get him on the show. I'm going to be watching very carefully if he looks your way. I, I would like to hear how he responds to I would, too. Now. Oh, he'll come Especially on. I'm, 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 I'm going to shoot him a take. Here we go. Please do, Shannon. No mercy. Here's the thing. Oh, Reports don't show this. have come don't show out. It. Skip, we no. gotta show it. No, oh, yes. Madden yes. Look is at set that. to retire no. from football this Friday. I'm gonna keep showing it. Mm. After spending most of this season on the bench behind Daniel Jones, Eli had already said that he didn't want a backup role next year. Eli led the Giants to two Super Bowl wins, including an incredible underdog victory over the 18-0 Patriots. And Eli will also mm-hmm. finish his career in the top 10 for both passing yards and touchdowns but we'll walk away with a 500 record of 117 and 117. Whoa. So Rob Parker is here. And now, Rob, I have known and I've seen your articles. I've seen your tweets about how much you like Eli over Tom Brady. So I think it's appropriate if I give you the floor. Skip Bayless. Yes. I sent Skip a uh, text last night with the tweet to make sure that he saw it. And what did I send back? Absurd. Is that what you, the I, word? I said you, you should enter this yes. in a fiction, fiction writing, writing contest, contest because you would probably win for <laughs> fiction writing. Skip Go ahead. That's good. To win that you know he did. Too. He probably <laughs> fell off his uh, rocking yeah. chair. But Skip, you always use football. I'm a fo- uh, pro football focus, right? Mm. That's his Bible? Yeah. Okay. So let me see. When we think about Super Bowl grades... Eli, 2007, 81.4. Tom Brady, 64.7. Mm. How about this? 2011, 91.1 for Eli, 69 for Brady. That doesn't in equal fact, the QBRs for that minute, game. They were in flipped. In fact, Shannon, in Tom's nine Super Bowls, he's never had a higher grade than Eli Manning. Right? That's your Bible that you follow. Okay. I don't know why people won't respect this guy. He's in, you just said it. He's in the top seven of completion, right? Top yards 10, and touchdowns. In the, right? Top ten. Top for ten both of all passing of yards and touchdowns. When you talk about, I'm talking about in clutch moments. Obviously, Brady's had a better career. I'm not sitting here trying to sell you that. I'm talking about if I need a big play, a big throw in a big game. It's Eli. For as much as people want to talk about... You need a big hit upside your head. You know what? No. (laughs) It's Eli in his run. Let's think about his his career in the postseason. Yeah. Won two overtime games in the NFC. Mm -hmm. One at San Francisco and one at Green Bay. Mm -hmm. He won the two Super Bowls. He beat the 18-0 Patriots. Yes. Okay? And you can talk about, well, the defense and Michael Strahan and all that. That's fine. Yes. He still needed touchdowns at the end. There was no time for no Adam Vinatieri. Right. He needed touchdowns to win, and he got them. Here's the other part. Eli, uh, 
the throws. He has signature throws in big moments. You could talk about anything that Tom Brady's ever done. He's never made a throw that, that the Eli made to Manningham up the left side right. in, in that situation. That I'll give ball, you one. Okay? Yeah. And even with the David Tyree, everybody wants to say, oh, that was lucky and he threw it. And Eli, watch the play where he avoids the sack mm-hmm. to make that play happen. He gets the ball off. And I'll give you, okay, Tyree with the helmet. But that wasn't ball game. That wasn't in the end zone for a right. touchdown. What do you do, Shannon? He still had to go continue right. to drive and win the game with a touchdown, which he threw to Plaxico Burris to win. All I'm saying is, in clutch moments, Eli has been that guy and better than Brady. Better than Brady. There's no fumble Philadelphia when Brady gave up the ball at yeah. the end of the game. How about the Wes Welker pass? Skip, we did the other show together. Don't, don't back down now. I'm not. And I, you admitted I, it that day, Shannon. Yeah. Welker was open. Brady missed him. Brady but missed he, him. It's not that like would have iced well, the wait, game. Wait, wait, wait a second. It wasn't like Dak overthrew Tavon by 10 <laughs> yards yeah. to win the game. But it, It's a little outside, but Shannon makes the point. The safety is did. coming. I know why he did it. You see 21 was going to peel his cap. That was, I, I was that Andrew Rowe? Yeah, I think it was. But he was open, though. Okay, All Brady had not, to do was lay that ball. He's wide open, but Shannon. Here's thing, but here's the thing. That's an inside scene. He's supposed to be at the numbers. If he throws this ball at the number, and Terry Rose going to decapitate him. And Brady tries to throw him because this, the uh, corner is hung up with the guy. Uh, uh, see? No, you can't. You can't. I, I get why he did it. I get why he did it. It's, it's a throw. If he makes that throw, they win that Super okay, Bowl. Okay, but Rob, Wes Welker, who's pretty good, he got both hands on the football. Yeah. You probably should catch it. I'll, yeah. I'll agree it was slightly off yeah, it target. Was. It was, and he had the twist. Okay. All I'm saying is Brady could have made a better pass in that situation. And, uh, and you could, whatever you want to say about Eli, and I get it, the regular seasons, I still would take, and, th- and, and this whole notion that he's not a Hall of Famer skip is outrageous. Jo- want to look at Joe Namath's numbers or whatever? Yeah. But what did he do? He had one of the biggest Super Bowl upsets ever. Eli's record when he's underdog in the postseason? Seven and two. He has the best mark of any quarterback in the history of the National Football League when they're underdogs. Uh, playing in the postseason. Well, they should have been underdogs more so he'd have a better record. Uh, go ahead, Skip. I'm going to let you have it. You're going to let me yeah, go? Yeah, go ahead. Really? Skip? <laughs> there is no way Eli Manning is in the Hall of Fame. And it is laughable and beneath my dignity to even <laughs> respond about Eli's better than Tom Brady. I said in clutch situations in a Super Time Bowl. Out. Tom Brady has six rings because of six Fourth quarter game winning drives. Six. Every ring he has, he did it with a late drive for a touchdown. And I'll give you, there's not one signature throw. Remember <laughs> that one? They were all signature. And furthermore, in the first Eli Super Bowl, Brady did it again. He drove them 80, 75 yards, 75 yards in 12 plays, and he hit Randy Moss on third and goal from the six with, with what looked like was another clutch Brady throw for a touchdown that won the game. 242 remained, and Eli got the ball at his 17-yard line against Belichick's defense, and he did drive them, but it took a third and five play from their 44. <laughs> And Eli, in today's rules, he's in the grass three times. They're, they're going to blow the plate. Want the rules back <laughs> then. All right, but they would have blown the plate dead today. And then he escapes and escapes, and he's not mobile. I don't know how he did it. And then he basically closed his eyes and flung he it as far as he could. He didn't close his eyes, Skip. You saw his eyes closed when I don't he think he throw? saw a receiver. He just <laughs> threw it up the middle of the field because the game's going to be over. And somehow David Tyree, who they all said had terrible practices <laughs> leading up to yeah. the Super Bowl, who was like their fifth receiver, he, he pins it against his face mask against Rodney Harrison. Who and the was ball's a, fluttering, too. Yeah, it's fluttering. <laughs> and, and Rodney Harrison's a really good yeah. football player. And why I he don't didn't, how, I don't know how he didn't look see at Eli, it. Eli, unbelievable. He, he, he Tyree, gets out of it. I don't know how Tyree held onto the ball without I, it touching the ground. Sure, don't either. And we had Eli on the show for the, after the 2016 season before the Super Bowl, and he admitted luckiest play in Super Bowl history was that play. And how he got MVP for that, yeah. the Giants' defensive line, all four of them or three of them, however you want to do it, they deserve the MVP because they put Brady under fire the whole game. And they were big favorites in that game, but to hold him to 14 points was extraordinary. All right, I'll give you that, but also, right, 
Belichick, what's he known for? His defense, right? right? For Eli, after Brady scored that touchdown, to come back and march down the field. Mm -hmm. And remember, the Tyree was not in the end zone. He still had to continue to drive. He made a nice throw on a fade route to Right. I will give you that. But just remember, Hall of Fame, he's, as Jenny pointed out, he's a 500 regular season quarterback. That doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame. He led the league in interceptions three Joe times. Joe Namath is under 500. Okay, time out. This isn't about Joe Namath because you have a point there. I love Joe Namath. Yeah. I know him well. But he did just have the one moment in the sun. I, but, I would but, Skip, give but you have to look at the errors in which they okay, played. Okay, I got errors. it. But Eli has led this league in interceptions three times, and he only made four Pro Bowls in 16 years as But there's starter. only – there's 100 years of NFL football. Yep. And only six quarterbacks have won – more than two Super Bowls. Okay. How can I, Eli be left out? Okay, but remember. And especially he won both MVPs, Shannon. Right. Well, it ain't Rob, like, the last eight years. You're a Hall of Famer. He's not a Hall of Famer to you? He's I defer to Skip. Stuff. <laughs> what? Oh, 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 okay. I, I, I defer to Skip. We're, we're talking about the Eli fame. Manning, who over the last eight years as starter, they made the playoffs one time in eight years. Before this season, Tom Brady got his team at least to the AFC Championship game or to the Super Bowl eight straight years. That's un, un, inconceivable. I'm not saying like, matching their careers. I'm talking about in clutch moments in big games. Eli was a big game player. Well, Tom and Brady is simply the biggest game player well, there but, ever was. But, 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 but the, the, early, the, early, the early Super Bowls, Adam Vinatieri kicked field goals. Yeah, but okay, Rob, you're talking about he's a big game player, but it's such a small sample size of him playing well in these big games. Yeah, but, but that's because his team, for the most part, and I'm not saying it's all his because... When you talk about his 500 record, the Giants were not good. There's a lot of other issues. Hey, guess what? On who was the quarterback team? on that well, good team? I understand that because there were some times he wasn't good. But 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 guys who perform on the big stage, yes. it does matter. It's yeah. like the whole idea. Would you take Philip Rivers' career or Eli Manning's? Well, I was, if, you want the Super Bowl? No, but 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 Philip Philip Rivers right? was consistent, and yeah. they were always in the mix, I and they went to the playoffs. The who would you take, Skip? Okay, Philip Rivers you know or Eli? What? It's irrelevant. No, so yeah, you know, because, because you're asking your question. Okay. Whose career are you taking, Ben Roethlisberger or Philip Rivers? Career. And your guy, and Ben Ray got no Super Bowl MVPs. I know he doesn't. Who career are you taking? I would take. I would still would take <laughs> Ben because he made it. He won two Super Bowls. Rob, well, yeah. Ben? You have filled this table with Brady hate once again. <laughs> it's all over Somehow, the table. We're going to have to get here. it cleaned up. I can't, even, I can't even go with you on that one. You can't go with you Shannon, I thought you'd have my back on this. Really? <laughs> Here's the other thing, though. There could be a future Manning because Cooper Manning's son, Arch, is the star freshman QB it in co- high school. That so would be we might have another Manning. It's, potential. Yeah. it's just exciting to think about. But, hey, a little pressure Shannon, there to live up to the name. <laughs> you disappointed me. <laughs> <laughs> you came on. You had the floor. You Skip. You made your case. <laughs> you know you I'll leave it at that for Rob. You made no your case. Mercy. All right, Miami, here we come. Starting Monday, Undisputed and all of our FS1 shows will be live at Loomis Park on South Beach as we get ready for Super Bowl 54. If you are in the area, please come by. Watch us live and in person. We have audience check-in. It starts at 8.30 a.m. How cool to see the show up close and personal, and I am really looking forward to it. I was also really looking forward to seeing Zion last night. He did not disappoint in his first game with the Pelicans, dropping 22 points in only 18 minutes, including a wild stretch of 17 straight points in the fourth quarter that included four threes. Zion would then be pulled for the final stretch because of a minutes restriction, leaving New Orleans fans chanting, we want Zion, as the Spurs would go on to win this one. 121 to 117. So, Shannon, will we continue to see what we saw in the fourth from Zion Lester? Well, I'm, I'm certain you'll still see the athleticism, the infectious, the all-out effort, the energy. Yeah, you're going to see that. You're going to see probably, you know, 8 to 10 rebounds. Uh, you're going to see the block, the incredible block shots and dunks. Now, I don't know about the threes. I think the four, the four for four three skip, I yeah. think that's an anomaly. And I'm glad, you know, if he can make one a game, two a game, I'm sure they like that. But I don't think that's going to be in his repertoire. I think they just left him so wide open that he's like, this is this disrespectful mm-hmm. for you to leave me this wide open and not and not me take and not take the shot. But uh, yeah, I think the athleticism. You're going to see Zion, the, the Zion Williamson that you saw uh, at Duke. I believe that's what you're going to see. Minus the three-point shots. Mm. Obviously, he's not going to make four for four three-point <laughs> shots going forward every game because I don't think at Duke he made 
four in a game last year. I don't think so either. So if he can make one of three a night or two of five, that would be really good because that will make them respect him from that line. So all I know is I watched those four preseason games, and I saw what I saw in the fourth quarter throughout the preseason. Right. That that wasn't shocking to me. That's who he is. Mm -hmm. So he he would average 27 minutes a game in the preseason. He was averaging 23 points, and he was shooting 71%. I think you'll continue to shoot 70-ish percent from the field. Mm. Yeah, because a lot of his shots, Skip, I think a lot of his shots are going to come close around the yeah. basket. Because he's going to be, he's not going to be a guy like, you know, Barkley and Mailman. Those are guys that, you know, play the, five, play the four position. But they shot outside shots. A lot of his stuff's going to come around the basket like big guys, like a Dwight Howard, like a mm-hmm. JaVale McGee, a Shaq. A lot of his stuff's going to come in the restricted area. So he's going to shoot a high percentage. I think you will soon <laughs> call him... Maybe the best closer in basketball, uh, like finisher. I'm right. talking about. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. you can finish at yeah. the rim like yes. nobody can. Yes. So what did I see from him last night? When the the lights are brightest, he lights up. Mm-hmm. He, he loves the spotlight. Mm-hmm. He thrives in the spotlight because he was the face of college basketball last year. Yeah. And it didn't seem to bother him a bit. Mm-mm. In fact, the bigger the moment last year at Duke, the better he played. Right. He cost you a case to do one night against Carolina yeah, in the ACC we final. Him. We had him. Oh, Remember? Yeah. yeah, we had him. Oh, and yeah. a big putback. Remember yeah. a foul shot? That was a foul. Well, it went in, and you lost. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know why he can't keep doing that. I brought up the Cam Newton syndrome of Cam was so extraordinary in his first Put two pro so games. High. Yeah, that it was hard for – he never lived up to 400 yards passing right. in his first two games. Yeah. I don't think he's ever had a – no, he hasn't had a 400-yard game since, since then. Right. Okay, did Zion set the bar too high? This kid, I don't think so. Right. And, again, he seems to really love playing on this team, and it really looks like his teammates really love Mm -hmm. having him on the team. Mm -hmm. So it's not like he's got a big head, big ego diva where he comes in and they're all, you know, a little bit – resentful of the attention that he's getting. I don't think they're – I think they're going to embrace it. Oh, yeah. Because, look, they believe this is the guy that can help them reach their ultimate goal, which is make the playoff this year. Yeah. I don't think anybody thought they could. Um, And, you know, you hear people say, well, yeah, they can – yeah, but I don't think people really thought they could make the playoffs this year. And with this guy, if he can give them – how soon do they increase it to get to 20, 25? I don't – skip. like I said, I don't really see him getting over 30 this year. Not this year. And so – can he do this kind of damage and say, if he did this kind of damage in 18, what could he do in 2025? I assume slowly but surely he'll get yeah. up there. And then the next issue is, can he start making a few mid-range jump shots yes. to keep people even more honest? Because yes. they will start building the wall that Giannis. we saw Toronto build against Giannis. Right. Right? And say, you just can't come in here because you're only 6'6". Six, six. We'll just keep you from the rim. Right. Okay, so at some points, he's going to have to make some threes or make some jumpers. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> go ahead. You can't, Skip, you just can't be threes and dunks. Yeah. you gotta, you got to have a mid-range game. Yeah, well, we'll unless see. You, unless I, you're Shaq. Yeah, <laughs> well, he, but he's thing. only six six. So right, I think he's got <laughs> high capability to make jump shots. <laughs> All right. No mercy. Promoter Bob Arum has proposed a two-fight deal between boxer Terrence Crawford and UFC star Conor McGregor. The first would be an MMA bout, and that would be followed by a boxing match. Conor mm. has been angling to get into the ring again, either a rematch with Floyd Mayweather or taking on Manny Pacquiao. So this deal could help turn McGregor into a legit boxer. Mm. So, Shannon, is this a good idea or bad idea for Conor? Skip. Connor, <clears throat> bro, you just had a big, big win over Cowboy Cerrone, and it looks like you're climbing back to that mountain that you that you occupied for a period of time. Stick to the UFC, and when it comes to the boxing thing, people wanted the boxing because of who you were fighting. Bud Crawford is unbelievable, mm. but he ain't Floyd Mayweather. Mm-hmm. People are not gonna come see you fight Bud Crawford. Mm. Nobody thinks that Bud Crawford can beat you in the octagon. So why am I gonna watch that? Mm. Plus. Bud Crawford isn't a big enough name. No! He's undefeated now, but is he a household name? No. no. Is he Floyd Mayweather Jr., Manny Pacquiao? No! no, no, no. The only other guy that Conor could fight that would generate buzz, and you know who it is, he's too big for him, mm. Canelo. Mm. Oh. Yeah, he's too, literally too big. <laughs> he, he's, he's too big. He would big. destroy yeah. Conor probably inside yeah. of a round. <sighs> he, but other than that, nobody, but stop it, Bud. 
Yeah, this is a Bob Arum special. Yes. I love Bob Arum, but he's just trying to drum up something that really isn't yeah. there. Right. Okay, would would I watch it? Would I pay to watch it? Yes, I would. A boxing match <laughs> without you know a UFC what? match. Well, I, w- I would pay to watch both of them, but I don't think a lot of people would pay. No. It, this would be no record pay-per-view. No. You got Sean Bud. You can fight Sean uh, uh, Porter. You yep. can fight. What's the guy? This is an accident in Dallas. Yeah, uh, uh, Spence. Spence. Yeah, yeah you can uh, fight him. Yeah. Fight him. Yeah. That was a boxer. We'll see, uh, that is it for us. We'll be back tomorrow morning at nine thirty Eastern. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, nine thirty Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. Of one. Of one.